Hello, friends of the Gaming Outsider. On episode 413, Zach and Alyssa help me answer questions from the community. In news, a new Assassin's Creed game has a title, and if the rumors are true, the game sounds awesome. Also, Halo Infinite is getting co-op added to the campaign, but there is a catch. Alyssa is the only one who played anything new this week, and you'll hear her impressions of a kaiju dating sim called Kaiju. Yes, you heard that correctly. And a Korean horror game called White Day, a labyrinth named School. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 413 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community, which can be found at thegamingoutsider.com. It is Sunday, September 4th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me are my good friends, Mr. Zach Parker. I have returned. You have, thank you. And Miss Alyssa White. Hi, I'm glad Zach has returned. I've missed you. Thank you, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys need me to leave the room for a minute? Or? Right. Just No, you can say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that 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 the uh, episode where it was just the two of you a couple of weeks ago was uh, was uh, quite flirty. I'm not wow. gonna lie. It was it was, it was hard to, to keep it reined in when you're not here or you know. <laughs> yeah, it kind of yeah. is. <laughs> I could tell. I keep you guys in check. Yeah, exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You're a teacher. That's kind of your job, right? Kind of a little bit. I, I'm used to it. I think <laughs> he's used to younger people than us, but you know. Well, you know, those fourth graders act a little more mature than you guys sometimes, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> Are you more mature than a fourth grader? Make our own little video right, game, sure. TV show. Okay. Zach, you've been gone for a while. What have you been catching up on? Oh, man. Video games, I think I've just. I've been, I dab a little in Spider Man Remastered on PS5. Oh, really? On uh, PC? On P- PS5. Because oh, yeah, well, everyone keeps t- you know, posting all these cool mods about their PC version. I was like, let me slum it with the PS5 version and see what's <laughs> so exciting about this. And hmm. uh, and also, I needed to face my fear about this scary new face of his that he has on the PS5 version. Oh, yeah. I'm curious. How does it look? It's not, it's not as jarring as I thought it would be, but it is like... Everyone else, every character except the lead emotes so much better than the lead because I assume uh-huh. the animations or whatever just isn't lined up with the new face the same way or whatever. So he just, so he like has these like flat emotional reactions where you remember in the PS4 version, it was, you know, you, you really got, you really got sucked into the scene. It's mm-hmm. as though Keanu Reeves is acting now and it's just kind of one emotion. <laughs> oh, I was going to say it. That doesn't sound like a bad thing, but I, Guess no, yeah. Hey, hey, look, I love yeah, Keanu Reeves, but he's not going to win an Oscar. I get know. it, yeah. But uh, hey, the game's still great, it turns out. No surprise there. Uh, yeah, just mm-hmm. have a few hours. Uh, I will say, I did the, the fidelity mode, because it's got three different options on the PS5 version. You know, it's a, like 60, 60 frames. Uh, they do like a 60 frames ray tracing mode, which seemed intriguing, but it, like it takes a bunch of civilians off the streets and stuff. Anyway... All this technical stuff that I don't really care about, but I chose a fidelity mode, which is supposed to 30 frames a second, but look the best. And I'm not usually a graphics guy, but that's a, that's a very pretty video game. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. I don't know if it was always, you know, I don't know if it's some, some kind of new gen trickery, like, like maybe I should go back to PS4 version and check, but like the lighting is insane. The way the, the, like the sunset kind of spreads over New York city and reflects off the skyscrapers and stuff. It's a pretty good looking game. Remind me, are you on a 4K TV? Yeah. Okay. I have to so, assume yeah. most people have 4K. It's like 4K is not a new technology anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you like, if you even buy a TV, like, why would you buy anything but 4K? Like, you probably have to like go to the back room to find a 1080p right. TV yeah, anymore. You have to, like, go to the Walmart kids section to find a 1080p TV. Right. Oh, in my small right. hometown, it's kind of hard to find 4K TVs. Really? Okay. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's still stuck in the past. Like, you can't find Blu-rays here. Everyone still buys DVDs. Whoa. What? Yeah, they still sell physical CDs at Walmart. Like, it's all in the past here. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we don't have CDs at Walmart anymore. I don't. I don't believe. I think they're they mostly country DVDs, music but... CDs yeah, here. Country, but yeah. that makes sense. It's like Garth Brooks is, didn't Garth Brooks become like the best selling CD artist last year or something like that? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I it wouldn't surprise it. me. Yeah, that makes sense. I rem- remember when we were kids and or I was a teenager a lot longer ago than you guys were, but having that like portfolio of CD yeah, sleeve the, things in the in car, the, binder. You, the zi- yeah. yeah, the zipper binder that just you like flip through. That was like before texting and driving was a thing. I didn't text <laughs> and drive, but I sure rifled through a portfolio of cds to find something Do you remember to listen the, to uh, the walkman on the dashboard with the cassette tape 
a thing. Oh, dude, I had one of those, but mine was actually suction cup to the to the windshield. Oh, wow! So it had better shock absorption. Well, you're a DJ. That makes sense. You know, you gotta have the yeah, yeah. the high most high tech uh, option. Oh, dude, I thought I was so cool, man. Like jamming out to John Williams and my 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 Ford Escort four speed. Uh, yeah. So, uh, back to Spider Man oh, yeah, Remastered. Sorry. I've been really, I've been really tempted to to try that because I wanted something to push my um, Steam Deck, right? My Steam yeah. Deck. And uh, but it's still sixty bucks, man. I just right. I I I can't justify spending another sixty dollars for a game that I like. But I could just go play on PS4 and and maybe even upgrade to the PS5 because isn't it isn't the upgrade version at least cheaper? What uh, on PS5? You have to pay the full sixty or seventy. It's, yeah, it's twenty yeah. bucks. Which 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 yeah, I, see, which I, I felt go... dirty even doing that. But I did. Right. But I did that back when I first bought my PS5. I was just you know trying to grab up games. Hmm. So I I didn't do that. I did wind up buying Control for the Steam the Steam Deck because it was on sale for like. 11 bucks or something i can't remember i have yet to fire it up but i'm i will hopefully that'll be playing that sometime that'll be week. interesting because it felt like the ps4 could barely contain control right and plus it'd be fun to go back and revisit that game that game was just so intriguing and so much fun uh, to play, what, a, so. what a great centerpiece to their new universe they're making yeah all right uh as for me um i convinced another person to come online and play carcassonne with me uh, i don't i i didn't get uh, a text so Oh, I didn't realize you had it, but uh, oh yeah, okay. Well, now that I know that, we need to do some, some Carcassonne, man, because I I'll, that game never gets I'll older. I'll dust off my Xbox and update it, and you know, get the car download. Well, you don't need the 360; you can play it on the on the series. No, of course, console. yeah. I just haven't used my Xbox in a while. Is what I was saying. Oh, gotcha. Okay, but uh, yeah, Matt Sattler came and uh, joined me, and um, he had never played it before. He actually bought it just to play it. Um, and, uh, we just played like three or four rounds just to kind of teach him how to play it. And, uh, he wants to, he wants to play it with more people because that game is very different when you have two people versus three or four. And, um, yeah. So anybody wants to play some Carcassonne, I actually created a channel in our discord group just to like, you know, try to set up games of Carcassonne. Cause I freaking love that game. That's a game that I still don't have all the achievements. Cause that was back when, uh, the arcade games only had 200 achievement points. Oh yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. still I'm still missing three of them, and one of them is to get like five thousand points in all of your games, and I've got to be getting close to that. But the other two, I feel like I could, I could get. You have to like play online, and nobody's ever online, <laughs> like in ranked matches and stuff. So I figure like if you just go in and do a ranked match, and we would just find each other by default, and you could let me win, so you get the achievement. <laughs> just saying, let you win. <laughs> yeah, I used to. Oh, uh, they call it boosting in the achievement. Uh, in the achievement, <laughs> that's a, that's a cute way to say cheating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, nothing else older on that. But uh, we got some new games to talk about shortly. But before we get to the video game news, um, I hit. I did have CB stop by for a second, and I actually invited David Newman to come on the show uh, because he's actually going to be reviewing. Cult of the Lamb for us, and he wanted to talk about it because if you listened to the episode last week, um, I hit a game-breaking bug and have not gone back to the game because I got so frustrated with it, but um, Newman has finished it, and CB has, uh, after this recording, has actually finished it. So I wanted to have them stop by and talk about it so they could go into a deeper discussion on it. So we'll play that for you right now before we get to the news. I'm here with Chris Berensmeyer. What's up, man? Hey, buddy. I know you couldn't be on the show this week, but I'm so glad you're here to help talk about this game. And also, we got a very special guest. It's been a, quite a while since I've been on the mic with this guy, but Mr. David Newman. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, man? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Thanks for uh, agreeing to help us out with this game, because we're going to talk about Cult of the Lamb, which is a game I played, but I kind of hit a brick wall, hit a game-breaking bug on about day 16 and was not able to uh, proceed. And I kind of put a bad taste in my mouth, and I just decided not to start over yet. But David has actually finished the game, and he's actually going to also be reviewing the game for us on our website. CB's made it much farther than I did, so I wanted to get a chance to talk about this because I really do think this game is something awesome. Uh, but I wanted to talk to somebody that actually put in a good amount of time with it. So let's start with David, uh, just because uh, you've completed the entire thing. What are your overall impressions of this game that you guys have heard me talk about it? I think it's a pretty solid game. It's definitely and it's it's pretty interesting because this is actually my first rogue light game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so I actually wanted to ask you like what you thought about your impressions as far as it being a roguelite just first before I dive in a little bit more. Okay, well, I mean, my impressions were I really enjoyed the dungeon crawling aspect of it. Uh, I, I, I found myself wanting to do that more than the sim management stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, the sim management stuff is fun, but I just found myself wishing that I were doing more dungeon crawling. Uh, the management stuff can get somewhat tedious, especially as your cult starts to grow and grow and you want to give a blessing to everybody and you got to clean up the poop and, and everything. And it's it's fun to do that, but I really enjoyed the uh you know the the arcadey aspect of it more than the sim side now like in a game like moonlighter i love doing both but this one i i found myself liking the dungeon stuff more i totally agree with that and i think you even though you were on day 16 it sounds like you got that impression that you were going to be doing a lot more of that resource management and mm-hmm. stuff with your cult and i felt like i was the same way and I think because you and I have very similar uh, ways of playing games and that we're very checklist oriented yes. and the more followers you get, the more blessings you got to give and everything. And it just gets kind of overwhelming to the point where you finish a day that you're unable to uh, like go out and do the dungeon crawling and you have mm-hmm. to like feed your feed them and everything like that. That's where like I really had, some difficulty as far as getting back in the dungeon crawling where I had to like feed my people all the time. Right. And yeah, I think after a certain amount of time I was able to kind of step away from doing all the management. Um, but I wish there was a little bit of quality of life things added into it. Like having someone be a cook for you to like be able to do that while you're away and everything. Oh, okay. But, uh, See, but you look like you were you shaking your head a little scrubs. bit. You... <laughs> oh man. You were shaking your head. You disagree? You guys, uh, Failed to read. There's a, I can't read, okay? I know, <laughs> doctor. Um, clearly you guys don't look at the rituals very well. Uh, I, I know what you're talking about, the rituals, and I was able to do more rituals uh, after like getting one uh, upgrade that allowed me to break... Uh, you, the requirements were in half of what you needed. That was like a perfect one for me. And then also decreasing the cooldowns. So you yeah. get like ones that you can uh, get like uh, your faith stays locked at full for like two days. You Did can you read feed the one harvest for some... food? Is there a harvest? Which one was that? The, f- the, the ritual of the feast? Yeah, I did that one as well. Yeah, did you read that one carefully? Mm-mm. Yeah, you don't have to feed your people for three days. For three days? And they have full stomach nice. and they're happy. Oh. The problem is, is go. that you go out into a dungeon and you're gone for two to three days. So well, you're, okay f- you're okay for that time. And I guess if you have the decrease in cooldown, you could probably do the same thing. So you just you have to have the resources for it. You, you make some food real quick before you leave. Because if mm-hmm. you have the certain cape that gives you extra hearts, if you eat your own food, you leave a bunch of food on the ground. Feast of the following. I, uh, the feast... And then you can leave for like four days and you come mm-hmm. back and they're still completely happy. I, I actually nice. maxed out all the trees. Oh, okay. You're speaking a language I don't understand. I don't even know what that means to max out your trees. So uh, as you gain more inspiration, you can unlock additional buildings. So like you can hire janitors that clean up all the poop. Right. And you yeah. can hire, make it so people work f- the farm for you. So you it's, can actually self automate everything. The old, so yeah. you're basically harvest mooning this game, is what it sounds. Yeah, like. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you I, so, and, and you and, and if you put a little bit of time early on into the management, it does make it a little easier later on. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But I mean, I, I think I basically just show up and collect everything, and reset my rituals, bring in the new in inductees to the cult, and then go back out and quest more. So CB, you're enjoying this game as well. This Sounds is like it. This is a contender for my top ten. Oh my goodness! Explain to everybody why they should play it. Why it's so good? Because uh, I feel like I didn't give it due justice. This, but... this legitimately is uh, outside of source material, like the story and everything. This is actually probably one of the best like inductions into roguelikes. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it's very because. Every single one of the the runs that you make, 
is going to never be longer than 20 minutes. Right. Yeah, the the runs do feel shorter than most roguelikes that I've they're, played. It's really, they are it's really super nice. Short. The and, and and I had heard that it was going to be about average 10 minutes and that's why I thought it would be like a great like pick it up and then you know, you could put it down after a run like real quick if you had some time. Uh, mm-hmm. the management makes it a little bit difficult to do that, but when you get further in the game, it it uh, you are able to do that a little bit more. Yeah. Now, I obviously didn't make it to any of the major bosses. I just had the mini bosses. Can you guys tell me a little bit about that and what like how difficult are we talking? Is it satisfying to get lots of good rewards? They, I actually enjoy the bosses because uh, most of the major, because there's actually multiple major bosses. Mm-hmm. Um, so in an area, you'll fight a boss, which is usually a, a beefed up version of one of the minions that you'll find. Mm-hmm. They'll have like a new attack patterns and everything. And the it feels so like an old school arcade where there's a, like a good pattern recognition. You find it. It's really easy to solve but you'll clear that. And that's like one of the bishops. Then later on, if you go back to that area, it unlocks a witness, which is like an upgraded version of that boss. Right. And you can just keep running that over and over and over and just farming material. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And like, what do you think? Oh, I was going to say like, once, once you figure that pattern, it's just every single time. It's just easy. As long as you get a decent weapon. Gotcha. So, David, now you've, you've beaten the game. How uh, satisfied did you feel, you know, upon completing it? I mean, is there more to do afterwards, or or do you feel like you're you're uh, you're done now that you beat the final boss? Uh, I think I'm done. So, the idea would be kind of what CB is getting at is going back through dungeons and collecting resources and essentially building up your cult and everything even more, but. To be honest, I don't see any real reason to go back. Now, I, yeah, I, I, mean, enjoy, it, I enjoyed this game. I know it sounded like I wasn't, like, I just wish I was more in the dungeon crawling aspect. Mm-hmm. But, but I didn't dislike the management portion of it. Either. Gotcha. So. I, will, I will say, and, and we've, we've had this conversation a little bit on our Discord, because you were looking for other recommendations. And I know you've got Children of Morta right now, mm-hmm. um, which, which I know you said you were looking forward to getting into. And I absolutely love that game. But I would, I will say, reiterate that I, I would also recommend you to check out Moonlighter mm-hmm. because the balance between the dungeon crawling and the shopkeeping in that one feels better. Like I never, I never felt um, like let down that I had to go manage my shop. It, it felt very, very rewarding. At least I felt more rewarded. Again, I didn't get as far as you guys in Cult of the Lamb, so maybe it gets super better later. But I. I hope you give that one a shot because I really want to see what your uh, your impressions of that game are as well. I'm I'm actually like right near the end, so I'm kind of curious to see how this thing wraps up. Nice. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much for, to both of you for stopping by to uh, give some extra impressions. I feel like this one is kind of a dark horse of the year. I didn't even hear about this game until it came out. I don't I don't know where where it came from yeah. or why it was off my radar, but um, sounds like it's an it's a Top 10 contender for CB. Where does it land for you, Newman? I mean, it's definitely a top 10, The uh, but I will say I don't play a lot of new games, at, uh, but when I, I'm glad I got the chance to play this right away. Awesome. So. Well, thanks again, guys, and uh, we'll get uh, go ahead and get back to the show and move on to the week's news. Some interesting things to talk about this week. First off, a new Assassin's Creed game has been officially titled. A uh, game, The Game Pass family plan has officially been confirmed by Microsoft. Halo Infinite's online co-op campaign is finally coming to the game. Sony will not be refunding damaged copies of the Firefly edition of The Last of Us Part 2. And a new Mafia game is officially in development. So some interesting tidbits here, Zach. Where would you like to start? Tough to say. We do. We really have a little bit of a new situation in our hands this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna may, maybe throw a little bit of a curveball. I want to talk about this ne- this new Assassin's Creed game. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm surprised you picked that story. I thought you'd I was going somewhere too. else. Right. Well, guys, this game sounds awesome. Yeah, right? I like the name. Just Assa- alone. Right. Assassin's Creed Mirage is a list alluded to. Uh, you know, it, 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 they're calling it a rumor right now, but it's been, what, 17 different people have said the same thing. 
at this right. point, but it, it takes place in the Middle East during the early 800s. Yeah, play as yeah, younger Basim from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I don't know if anybody in this podcast knows who that is. I do not. No, CB would. <laughs> yeah. I think CB's the only one to finish uh, that game because he's got time. There are, uh, no dialogue choices, no gender choice. Back to basics approach, more like the original Assassin's Creed, a focus on stealth. There, uh, apparently, it's not really going to have upgrade paths or skill trees uh, as well. And a remake of the original game is going to be included in the season pass for the game, which is also super cool because that first game rocks. Yo, this game sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. About to play an Assassin's Creed game for the first time in, oh my God, 10 years? Well, so, oh I yeah, wait, no, I reviewed Odyssey. I forgot entirely because it was so <laughs> average. But uh, yeah, wow. This game sounds awesome. It really does. And I mean, just imagine playing an open world game without a skill tree, without dialogue. <laughs> like, it's that's going to be... It's sad to say that that's going to be a refreshing change of I, pace. I know. Yeah, it really is. I'm excited for it as well because the newest the the newest Assassin's Creed game, I can't speak. The newest Assassin's Creed games have just been so overwhelming because they're so open. So, yeah. getting back to the stealth-based approach and not having all this stuff, dialogue choices. Well, and I I don't know how it worked in Valhalla, but but in Odyssey, stealth kills weren't one-hit kills. No. It, oh no. It's all damage dependent and that that was so frustrating. That like that breaks Assassin's Creed for me because I want to play it's a self franchise as far as I'm concerned. Right. And the fact that and, and again I'm not knocking Valhalla. Uh number one, I didn't finish that game. I didn't even play more than two hours of that game. But just the fact that the the portions that I did play were you as a Viking basically pillaging. You know that I mean that's not assassin, right? It's not what made assassins cool. Um, I, I feel like the last games I really li- I did like them. I liked uh, Odyssey and um, Origins. I liked them quite a bit, but I almost just wish they weren't called Assassin's Creed, which sounds weird. You uh-huh. know, because there's there's the whole overarching story and everything. But I well, just felt like they in didn't... some entries they're real hit or miss. Well, yeah, that's true. I still haven't finished uh, obviously Valhalla. I've heard the ending of that. Does something really interesting with the with the the story, but uh, I've uh, to this point I've refused to just go watch a YouTube video because I it's one of those I want to experience it. But you guys know I I'm watched it; it's pretty video. cool. Is yeah. it? It features it features a return. Yeah, maybe of a you should just watch it too because I'm now getting to the point like with Scott, like if it's a sixty plus hour game, I'm I'm like, oh no, well, especially it's long. You know, as as discussed in my Odyssey review, it's a sixty hours of just the same thing. Yeah, that just, sounds even worse. Yeah, just, and, and and I don't know how worse in Valhalla or Origins. I do want to play Origins just because of the Egypt setting, but in Odyssey, it was just like, as long as I just press square, every enemy dies. There's mm-hmm. no there's no challenge or intrigue happening. It's funny how age has that effect on you, because when I was a kid, I would have been all over a 120-hour game like Valhalla. You know, because I had the time. I, like, like, I was... I was yearning for a game that would give me hours and hours upon hours of, of enjoyment. And now I'm like, I just want to get to the next one. There's so <laughs> so many games out now, too. But like back yeah. then, even when I was younger, you know, there wasn't that much stuff out. Now we're just mm-hmm. every single week, new, new games, new games, new games. Plus, we can't, uh, we can't really rent games anymore. Like no. try before you buy and... And demos just aren't a thing anymore, so you kind of just have to jump in with both feet and hope you get lucky. Right. So, you know. But anyway, I uh, am very excited for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, if the um, Hopefully these rumors are true, but we will find out uh, pretty soon here. On September 10th, the uh, there's going to be a Ubi- Ubisoft Forward live stream where they're going to give official details. And apparently they had to confirm the name of this game be- because of a leak that happened like the day before. And um, so I thought that was interesting. And also, there's still something called Assassin's Creed Infinite happening, which I don't know. We I feel like I don't know what that is well, yet. Or Assassin's Creed Rift is what the alleged name would be as well. Yeah, they said the, the um, Infinite title was just like a right. placeholder or a code name or whatever. But uh, I don't know. That sounds... That sounds online multiplayer ish. Yeah, well, to if, me. if what Jason Schreier has been reporting is true, yeah, it's, it'll be the platform off of which every Assassin's Creed will be built going forward. Mm-hmm. Live service Assassin's Creed. Who would have thought? 
inevitable. <laughs> We're all... G- all right, Alyssa, how, how about... Oh, I'm sorry. Did you oh, have more no, to say? I was just lamenting the hellscape that the video game industry will be in about three years or so. That's all. I think you would you would say that it already is there. No, but. well, when Sony was like, "We're going to make ten live service games, and we want fifty percent of our revenue to be live service," you know, once those games mm-hmm. are finished, then yeah, we'll be there. But we're definitely on the we're chilling with Virgil and Dante on the on the path to those inner circles of hell right now for sure. <laughs> so it's going to be like all of our single player experiences are going to be like indie titles, and there's we're not going to have any more AAA right single player I've, experience. Bring games back anymore. the mid tier. I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. And and if if I, if it's a live service Assassin's Creed, where it's like, you know, it has a multiplayer portion or whatever. But like, if every other year you can pay like thirty dollars for a campaign, that'd be kind of cool. You know, it doesn't ha- it doesn't okay. have to be the end of the world, is what I'm saying. I'm okay. with you. I'm with you. But it probably will be. Alyssa, which story would you like to talk about? I'll go with the one that I thought Zach was going to mention, and that's Sony will not be refunding damaged copies of the Firefly edition of The Last of Us Part One, which. This is just supposedly, but I did look into the article, and it was saying this is a $100 collector's edition that you could only buy through the PlayStation Store directly, and Mm -hmm. it comes with a steel case, four comic books, and various in-game skins and boosts, and people were saying Sony was just offering them 20% off another game instead of giving them a refund. (laughs) They haven't oh. come out themselves and said Sony or Naughty Dog have not come out and said anything about this, but Yeah, in fairness, they haven't responded. So it's yeah. not that, you know, no. they haven't said we will not be refunding well, not, not but publicly, a non-answer. But field. the customer service representatives have responded with your SOL, kid. Just like Which is 20% off another game. I just love that their answer to this is here's a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> like I just like, imagine if you had a, I don't know, you bought something for the grocery store and you open it up and there's roaches in it and you take it back and they're like, oh, we're sorry about that. Here's 50% off, you know, your next grocery order or something. Like, that just, I mean, I guess that would be a bigger deal. <laughs> yeah. You're, you know, you're buying groceries every week, you know, so you're going to, you're definitely going to save money there, but this is a luxury item, right? Video games are a luxury item and you pay a hundred dollars for a collector's edition you expect it to be packaged especially in the day where we where people are you know crazy about these collector's editions and their quality mm-hmm. you know with water grading and stuff i mean i I'm, I'm not saying this to promote that that kind of mentality but you don't package it and it gets damaged there are people selling this thing i saw on ebay for like 1200 which is crazy you, you know a, a, a 12 Hundred percent return, you know, on something that you got that you just happen to get lucky and be there first, you know, and and but if you and if you get a damaged one, that's no good. Again, I'm not condoning that scalper mentality, but I would be I'd be really upset. Well, I would be too. Yeah. I mean, did you see? Yeah. First of all, I love that my reputation is that I would dig in on Sony any chance I get. I like that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I thought. <laughs> well, they make it so easy. Uh, but did you see even some of the photos where like the envelope isn't even fully closed? Like what a right. what a yeah, joke! That's... I work at a place where we ship stuff. You, that would that would be unacceptable. That would come. The shipping station would come back to you. You would definitely get. You'd probably get written up for that thing. Is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. It's preposterous. You think anybody got written up over at Sony? No, apparently uh, they probably got a promotion. Sony loves a, any chance they get to nickel and dime and screw over their customers, they seem to take. And their customers are just like, thank you, Master. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, how do you defend? There's really no defending it. How do you, I, I just don't get it, well, man. I, like, I, mean, why, like, I think the console wars have to be worse than ever, right? Because right. things like this, even, you know, back in uh, back in our day, people would be mad about no matter which side they are on. But now people are, like, so tribal and entrenched in their sides. They're like, you know, they oh, they, ha- they had to ship it that way or something like that. Or it's like, it's on you. Or, oh, that's on the post people. No, it's, what are you talking about? I left a PlayStation warehouse. Right. Are you not going to properly package something? It does, it's not truly bizarre. that much more expensive to, to package Not at all surprised Sony did this, though. So. I, I just, I hope Sony turns it around because, you know, they're still on top. After, even after all this stuff, yeah. they're still on top. 
but it, it just it sure seems that the tides are shifting. And I, as much as a, uh, Xbox fan that I am, I, I still don't like seeing stuff like this happen to consumers. Even, Definitely. I mean, I mean, I own a PlayStation. I, I didn't buy this, but and that's the thing is you're talking about these people that are still like defending it. I guarantee you the people that had this happen to them aren't defending it. It's the people that are like, well, it didn't affect me personally. Right. Mm-hmm. So S- Sony still is Just awesome. like people who you know what I mean? aren't mad about the price hike of PS5. Because it didn't, it didn't affect right. me here in America. Yep. And that's why, yeah, did you hear us talk about that last week? Uh, I, I skipped that portion of the podcast. I was, I was so mad about it last week. I was irrational about the price hike. <laughs> I mean, I'm still mad about it, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't take other opinions right then. Because if I heard, I no, understand. I mean, we, if I heard even one of you go like, yeah, you know, but it has to happen, I was going to lose it. I don't think well, any the, of us said anything <laughs> remotely close to that. No, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the closest the thing that was said was, you know, I, I mentioned supply and demand. Yeah. I mean, that's that's how business works is supply and demand. I'm but unsubscribing to the on podcast. On the same token. No, huh? I have to unsubscribe to the podcast. <laughs> no. No, I mean, supply and demand is a business thing. That's how it works. But at the same time, there's never been a increase in price for a console years after it came no. out. Like, I, I could not think of a time that ever happened. It's always the opposite. So it but just as, seems As really soon as weird. the Quest got away with it. Sony, Sony saw their chance, but I think. Oh, I guess you're I think, right. I think we I had did, a, yeah. I think we have write-ins about this, so we can we can save it for later. Okay, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, Halo Infinite's hey, online co-op. Xbox messed up, but continue. <laughs> yeah, they they this this kind of. I mean, it bothers me, but again, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't affect you. Like what you mentioned a second ago, it doesn't affect me because I'm not going to. It's been so long since I played Halo Infinite. I just, I just don't feel like going back. It's to funny it. that the features originally promised at launch are just now finally about to happen. I mean, it's been a year, <laughs> it's, right? It's, or was that two years? I think November eighth uh, came out be, last year. Yeah, because because they launched it early. It was it November fifteenth to make, celebrate the Xbox anniversary? So it'll be right. yeah. one week shy of a year late. This the co op. <laughs> oh, that was intentional. Yeah. Well, at least it wasn't exactly. a year. That's, I think you're exactly <laughs> right. Well, but but it gets a little worse than that, too. So just to kind of catch everybody up, there's a content update coming on November 8th, and uh, it will have the co-op campaign, which is something that we wanted. They promised a long time ago, and then at launch happened, they said, well, we're going to hold off on that. It'll be out soon. It's only been a standard feature um, since the launch of the franchise. I can't imagine what people would expect it. Right. Uh, but on the positive side, cross-platform support will be available, but... This will be online co-op only. There is no couch co-op available, which is such a bizarre decision to me. I get it that not as many people play couch co-op anymore. And I don't know anything about programming and what it takes to code that and make that happen. But it, in my mind, it would be tougher to make the online version. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong when it comes to development, but it seems like it would be infinitely easier. To, make, to offer couch co-op, but again, I could be wrong. Uh, there's also going to be uh, th- this uh, Forge mode, which is a fully featured reaction suite. Uh, it's been in beta, and then there's been some multiplayer updates as well, which I'm not going to go into, into too much detail. But what do you guys think? No ca- couch co-op. Am I, am I alone in thinking that's a little weird? Yeah, I do think it's a little weird because, I mean, Halo became, you know, famous because people were would have LAN parties and stuff like that with it. But that was back before, you know, the big boom of multiplayer. But well, I mean, a LAN party you could still do. Yeah. I mean, that's just just not couch co op on the same consoles. You could still bring your console over to your buddy's house and and play that. But you way. could do eight player with only two Xboxes. Right. Yeah, it's just could... not being with your friends, and that's kind of always I was just envisioned with Halo multiplayer yeah, or co op. I, I just. Again, the market is is not demanding couch co op. Well, it's just, that's it's just nobody. I, is I don't see. I don't necessarily agree. the 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 market can't demand couch co op because nobody makes it anymore. That's a good point. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's kind of a a little bit of a self fulfilling prophecy in that way. Oh, I guess people don't want couch co op. Well, you never give it to us, so how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of and, a good point. and um. Was it, I think it was Halo 5 didn't have a split screen co-op. 
And the, I remember them saying that that would never happen again in the franchise, that it's core to the Halo experience. I guess that was a lie. Yeah, I've just come to the realization that uh, when when developers promise something, it's, you know, there's a 50-50 chance. And just take yeah. it with a grain of salt until you play the actual finished yeah. product. I guess yeah. I'll... That goes for uh, game release dates, too. Well, yeah, that's that's 90% chance that the first date they give you is a lie. Uh but I guess, man, yeah, you guys are. You, why do I got to be the grumpy guy? I think three four three needs to be taken off of Halo. Who do you want to take it? I don't know. Microsoft has twenty seven studios. I'm sure they got one in there. They work. The mm. problem is that's the problem with naming the studio after the franchise though with three four three, because now now if three four three gets taken off of Halo and works on something else, it's gonna look real bad. But at the very least, like Halo four. Fans thought it was mediocre. The story was confusing. Needed to read the books. Halo Five, pretty universally reviled. Halo Master Chief Collection, one of the biggest blunders in video game history. Halo Infinite, strong out the gate, no support after launch. How many times does a studio have to screw up before they get taken to task for it? You make a very valid point, man. Yeah. It's insane. Or at the very least, Bonnie Ross has been in charge the whole time. If I if I screwed up that badly four times at my job, I would not have my job. Yeah. Some jobs are secure, like weatherman. <laughs> yeah, well they're yeah, they're wrong every day, so <laughs> but uh it's just frustrating. I because especially because Halo Infinite was great out the gate, and then it just like nothing happened with it. Which is which is kind of funny, right? Because back back in our day you you would just play like years of war you just played it because you wanted to play it or whatever but that's just kind of not the reality of ever since modern warfare came along and enter you know instigated a progression system that's just people need to have the feedback now and halo halo infinite's right. not giving you anything and when you look at every other game on the market and how it's like constantly rolling out content updates you know destiny throwing in a new new raid every three months or whatever and halo can't even figure out how to do co-op until a year after launch it's not right. a good look and I would love it if they release another Gears online game that just has no progression. Yes. Just team of, team against team. You know, no, like, rankings to show. I mean, maybe have a, I don't know, was there even a number in the original Gears of War that showed, no, like, they, what ranking they patched you were or one in to Gears of War 2 later. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, it wasn't there for, like, the first year or two. Yeah, and we didn't care. Yeah. We just... We played it just to play it and be with our friends. Well, I think part and part of to fix what you're talking about is you have to keep people together after the match. Don't match make right. with a new group every time because that's how that's how what kept us playing. It was like social, right? You would you would smack talk the other people on the team, or the teams would switch up every round, right? So like the guy you just headshotted last round is now on your team. Your yeah, it was fun, <laughs> dude. It was great. It was we, we made lifelong friends off of that, but you need the lobbies. You need lobbies to stay static for that to happen. That just doesn't happen anymore. You can't even like. I, that should be an option. That yeah. should be something that you should be able to select. It's not. I don't want to just always play with randoms. I just that's just not fun. I want to play with the same dudes. I, I agree. I mean, that, like you said, we made. It, it was like a week weekly thing. Just like couldn't wait to get off work to go join the group, and like you were making sure you were home on time to be on time for right. for gears, you know, and just to play it. There was no like I got to go grind some hours in this to get my level up or to, you know, it was I just gotta, completely. I got to get my money out of this season's battle pass, man. I can't just thrush down the toilet. Right. Isn't it crazy that if somebody did that now, that would be just bold, right? Like to go back to an old idea like that. I guess no, no. Well, probably no one would play it, right? I think I don't know. Lemon Skate, right? I don't think that had any of this stuff we're talking about. That's a good point, but that all, that game also had a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's very niche. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't know if obtuse is the right word, but it's a. It's just a different style of game that takes a while to. It's not as accessible as a Gears, right? It's you know what I mean. Well, it's also it requires more thought than a Gears. Not to insult Gears, as I obviously love it. But it's, right. you know, it's like first-person shooter chess, Lemnus Gate. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and move on. I want to remind everybody that we do have an opportunity for you guys to uh, help the Gaming Outsider if you'd like and maybe get some extra content as well. We have a Patreon where we, uh, we look for some donations to the cause to help pay for the uh, services and pay for uh, review copies of games that we 
intern giveaway to the community. And uh, we've got some bonus content coming in the future as well. If you'd like to be a part of that, head over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. You can get all the details there. And uh, we are going to be doing another giveaway for the month of September. We're going to be uh, giving away a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Kawabunga edition on Xbox. So uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, patrons also get an extra entry in the hat for the giveaway. So stay tuned for details on that or head over to patreon.com forward slash the go cast. Let's go ahead and move on to the new games that we've been playing. All right, Zach, anything new on the horizon that we should, we should be checking out for purchase? Well, I think uh, the this is the the release season is upon us. Bio, Are you sure? This list doesn't look too no, exciting. No, this, to this is the first roll. First, this is the first signs. Anyway. Okay. Biomutant makes its next-gen debut with the PS5 and Xbox Series X version uh, on September 6th. Temtem, which is a MMO spin on Pokemon. Uh, finally hits a 1.0 release on PS5, Xbox Series consoles, Switch, and PC September 6th. Circus Electric uh, from your Zen Studio, Scott, coming uh, to PS5, yeah. PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 6th. That's, of course, written by the illustrious Chris Baker. Uh, nice. Disney Dreamlight Valley looks like Animal Crossing with Disney. Coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 6th. Mozart Requiem is a point-and-click adventure game around <laughs> Mozart. What a choice. Coming to PS4, Switch, and PC September 6th. The Tomorrow Children gets resurrected with his Phoenix edition on PS5 and PS4 September 6th. Jack Move is a, uh indie JRPG coming to PC September 8th. White Day. Rel talked about that one last week, actually. He's been playing that for us. Did he like it? He okay. did. He uh, I think there's some other ones that he liked better, but uh, he did enjoy this one. White Day, a labyrinth named School is something you'll hear about here shortly. Coming to PS5, Xbox Series console, and Switch September 8th. Seal Rising is the newest game from Spiders, and it's coming to a new RPG. Coming to PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC September 8th. BPM Bullet Per Minute Rhythm Shooter coming to Switch September 8th. NBA 2K23, which is a major release, even though Scott doesn't think so. Coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, <laughs> Xbox One and Switch, as well as PC September 9th. And then, uh, obviously, Splatoon 3, which I assume will sell a very quiet 10 million copies somehow, is coming to Switch September 9th. Do any of these games intrigue you, Alyssa? Well, definitely Disney Dream Life Valley. <laughs> yeah? I'm just a Disney person, okay. and I mean, I loved Animal Crossing for the like 200 hours I played it, and then I finally got tired of it. Um, it just, I know it's free to play, which is a ki kind of iffy to me because I don't know how that's going to work out. I'm sure they'll but, find a way to nickel and dime you. I'm sure. But I do want to just like play it and see, you know, how the characters interact because there's all these Disney and Pixar characters and you can customize a bunch of stuff and you can garden. And I just want to try it out and see if it's relaxing, if it's, you know, going to make me feel like a kid again inside because I love these movies as a kid. Um, I'll definitely give it a try. And also Splatoon 3, I would probably play some. There, I forget what mode it was, but it's just like you cover as much of the area with paint as possible and whichever team covers the most wins. Yeah. For some reason, that was so relaxing to me to play. I didn't play the really competitive multiplayer mode in Splatoon 2, but I would definitely play that again in Splatoon 3. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like Splatoon a lot. So those are the two for me. I think uh, BPM, bullets per minute, intrigues me the most, just because I love rhythm games and uh, especially incorporating them into shooters. But I'm uh, probably more interested in the other one that I played the demo for recently, which I... I feel bad i cannot remember the name of it but it's metal themed right um uh that was just a, th that game just played so well in the demo and i couldn't wait to get my you hands wanna, on you don't want to burn yourself out on rhythm shooters too soon right yeah they're they're the the next uh space horror <laughs> game for the year <laughs> seven but what about you zach uh well circus electric uh appeals to me just because i thought the the writing in operencia was so good if you from zen and this is mm -hmm. you know this is the same guy so it's intriguing there. I don't know about the gameplay though. Not, I didn't really like Darkest. Was it Darkest Dungeon? Very much. And this mm -hmm. just looks like 
Darkest Dungeon, but with a circus. So I, I don't know. Um, and then Steel Rising looks cool, but there's there's a lot of stuff coming next week, and then after that that I'm going to be intrigued with, so I don't know if I'll... And spider schemes are long, aren't Yeah, they? typically. Usually, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'll probably have to skip that one for now and just kind of prep for the future, because, uh, you know, games are coming out, man. A new Voice of Car- new Yoko Taro games next week. I saw that. Yet another, I think it's the third Voice of Card games in a year, which is probably too much, but, you know, <laughs> gotta check it out out of obligation. There you go. Yeah, but, uh, what is this, Kai- Kaiju, the Kaiju <laughs> Dating Son? Sim. Sim, okay. Scott can't, right? <laughs> Uh, kind of this putting in this on Switch. Do you get to you get to date Godzilla? Is that what's going on here, or Batara? Well, or... okay. In this game, you play a character named Gigachu, and okay. they look exactly like Godzilla, but they have hearts on them. Obviously. So, this game is really cute, but it does get very repetitive, which kind of made me a little sad. And it's very short, actually. But you play as Gigachu, and you're on the hunt for love, this, and you can make... Is this like a reference to, like, a Giga Chad? Like, you're just like... I was wondering. I don't actually know, but okay. that's what I thought of when I saw the name pop up, and you cannot change the name. Yeah, I just imagined the meme of Giga Chad, but with Godzilla doing the... What is Giga Chad? Oh, it's internet culture. It's yeah. just this... Yeah, it's hard to... It's, hard, it's almost yeah, hard to yeah. describe. It'll be like the Giga Chad Dante versus the the virgin virgil or something like that you talk about all the ways that dante is sexier than virgil or something like that but if you're a giga Ch- if you're a giga chat all the boys and girls want you boy sometimes the internet just baffles me but okay <laughs> don't you so use, is- don't you use tiktok scott no I thought you did oh yeah i use tiktok yeah. i i don't i i watch i don't uh-huh. i don't I think I've created two TikToks and they're super lame and I've gotten like three people to actually look at them. So I'm saying. I don't know if you should be I don't yeah. know if you should be throwing stones in your glass house. Well, I see Alyssa makes a ton of them. She I get a notification, like there's four or five a day. She's like, you know, I which just, anime character I'll am post I? post one a day. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, back to the back game. Back to Gigachu. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. So you're dating <laughs> Are you dating real ladies, or are you dating uh, other kaiju? No, you're dating other kaiju, and a lot of them look like iconic kaiju from films, because, I kid you not, there is one that is called Mothra. Yeah, okay. And it looks- Not Mothra, no, but Mothra? It looks exactly like Mothra, but instead of being, you know, what the monarch-style butterfly-looking moth that Mothra is, Mothra is just green- Okay, legally distinct Mothra. <laughs> so you have six different kaiju you can date, and you choose which one you want to date. And what happens is, <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> just the concept just makes me laugh. Like, is this a, is this a real thing? It I, is a real. I'm not thing. knocking it. I just don't. I know it is. It does. It, it, it sounds, sounds like you're making it up as you go. I'm not. I'm not knocking the <laughs> no. game. I just. It just sounds like this can't be a real thing. Like, uh, you know, that's probably how it was when it was that. What was that? That dating game where you could date birds or something. Oh, yeah. that was oh, a hot thing. a full and boyfriend? Is, yeah. Like, this is a real thing. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm, again, I don't mean to make it sound like I'm making fun no, of it. I just... No. Um, <laughs> so then you choose the kaiju that you want, and you can make Gigachu any... You can give them any pronoun. So you have that customization. That's it. And you choose the kaiju that you want to romance, and then... There are three different acts. There are four rounds per act, and the rounds just consist of answering questions. And the questions are they're they're repeated a lot, which gets really tiring. Oh, that's that's like And only one answer is the correct answer. So if you get the neutral answer or the negative answer, that will actually go against you and can end your game early. So you have to get the correct answer the majority of the time, which is a little frustrating because Sometimes you'll pick what you think is the correct answer, and it's not. But then when the question comes around again, quickly, usually, you know the answer. Right, yeah. And you're going around with your uh, kaiju date, and you're destroying historic landmarks <laughs> oh, all across the world. Romantically? Are they, like, are they like hand in hand? Like, 
I'll let you smash this building, honey. I d- if I you just- if you give the correct answer, they just go crazy. Like Giga Chew is shooting hearts out of their mouth, and your the other Kaiju is doing their special attack. If you give the neutral answer, they're kind of just like slapping the landmarks. If you give the wrong answer, it just starts raining, and they turn their backs to each other. Oh, so sad. <laughs> and there's also a news broadcast that happens between each act because the world is watching you while you're on your date. But, Does the world know that they're on a date, or does the world just think that there's two monsters <laughs> destroying the city? Oh, no, these broadcasters are uh, explaining to the world about the tale of love that they're seeing on screen. So people are actually shipping kaijus. Yeah, yeah they, make, they, they make up couple names for each one. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> but it does get very repetitive, and it only... Like Mothzilla? Uh, I think... <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to. Rem- I can't even remember some of the ship names. They're ridiculous. But each um, each one has the same exact ending. You you fight the same boss after every, you know, kaiju you date. Only a few lines of dialogue are tweaked, so you're hearing. Or, well, you're not really hearing. It's not voice acted. You're reading the same lines of dialogue over and over and over again, and each. Date, sim, whatever you want to call it, only lasts about 30 minutes total. All three acts. So 30 minutes total, and you still have repeating questions within that 30 minutes? Yes. And then, if you want to romance another character, you have to start a new game. And you get asked a lot of the same questions. There are a few that pertain to each kaiju that are different, but again, those will repeat as well while you're playing. So it does become really repetitive, sadly, and there's you don't do anything besides answer questions. Right. It's adorable, like, just looking at it, it's adorable, and it's hilarious. It just doesn't do a lot in the actual gameplay department, and it just gets repetitive very quickly, and it's really short. Yeah, the, the premise of smashing the world while you smash that kaiju, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> is... <laughs> Is a solid one, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't sound like it really has the legs. I thought it to be a quote on the back of the box. <laughs> it should be. Smash the world while you smash that kaiju. <laughs> so I can't just, I can't really recommend it, Yeah. but I'm not going to say it's horrible either. I would say if you're interested in it, wait for a pretty big sale on it. I'm not sure how much it costs at the moment. I need to look that up. And if this is your first episode of The Gaming Outsider, you need to know that Alyssa never speaks negatively about a game. Right. Well, it's, and, uh, and kind of specializes in, in dating sims. Yeah, she yeah. loves dating, dating yeah. sims. Um, I don't know. Just I'm, Again, I'm not dogging on a game I haven't played, but just this concept just sounds like something I want to watch a YouTube video on. Yeah, or like... For for three like minutes, an interactive yeah. flip book or something would be funny, but yeah, yeah, it sounds great for like a dollar ninety nine. There you go. <laughs> I would say just wait for a sale if you really want to play it, or just look it up on YouTube. Yeah, brutal, fair brutal. enough, brutal, brutal. Yeah, that's a good that's a good choice of words. But uh, let's go ahead and move on and talk about the other game that you've been playing, Alyssa, because apparently you play new games and Zach and I don't. Um, <laughs> White Day, a labyrinth named School. You're playing this one on Xbox. We should mention that you played Kaiju, the Kaiju, or uh, Kaiju, the Kaiju dating sim on Switch. Mm-hmm. But this one you played on Xbox. This one intrigues me a little bit more because Korean horror is a thing that 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 really, um, I don't know, I, I can't think of the word, but like, there's some messed up Korean horror out there. But I watched this trailer. I have no idea what's going on or even how the gameplay works because it felt like a cinematic trailer. So yeah. what's the story going on here? So you're playing as a transfer student and he's in his sophomore year and he has a crush on this girl and White Day is a holiday that is celebrated every year on March 14th because Valentine's Day, girls give chocolates and candies to their friends and the guys they like or just anyone they like in general. And then on White Day whoever got the gifts on Valentine's Day reciprocates. And he wants to give the girl he likes a gift on White Day, but he leaves it at school. So he decides to go to school super late at night. It's after 10 p.m. I just know it's after 10 p.m. And obviously he's sneaking into the school and creepy stuff happens. 
And the school looks like a castle for some reason. I'm like, why is this school so big? <laughs> I'm not finished with this game yet because I'm it it terrifies me. <laughs> so is it I gotta ask, is that real Korean culture that Valentine's it Day isn't, the girls buy stuff for the for the men? It is an Asian culture, uh tradition. Can we get on that? Should I because should I be keeping an eye on my mailbox for something from you in February, Alyssa? Yeah. Then, uh... Well, actually, it'd be March. Oh, no, February for females, March right. for men. Okay, so I expect stuff in my mailbox in March next year. Right, well, obviously, well, only if I get something first, <laughs> but right? Yeah, it's, it's reci- yeah, yeah, you gotta okay. reciprocate it. I'll keep my eyes peeled. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, this guy didn't get anything from this girl, so he's just being, you know, he's, he's just being then, nice. Right? Is he kind of being a creep? <laughs> No means um, no, bro. Well, true. And she kind of acts like she doesn't know who he is. So. <laughs> that's br- Yeah, that's brutal. Story of my life. Scott knows all about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this is very much in the vein of, you know, um, older survival horror games. You have limited resources. There's a creepy janitor that will kill you if he finds you and you don't get away from him fast enough. So I'm constantly just, you know, crouch walking because crouching doesn't notify him as often as you know walking does is it does it have a like locked camera angles like old school survival horror or is it like a no you can move the camera and i was a little bit uh uh leery about this game because it is first person and there's not an option to turn off head bob but this has not caused motion sickness with me okay i just want to put that out there it could for some other people, but I'm pretty susceptible to it, and it has not bothered me in that regard. Mm. Um, but it's got, you know, the mechanic of you have to find felt tip markers, and then if you want to save the game, use the felt tip marker on a bulletin board, but then you can't use that marker again, so you can't save the game again until you find another marker. You Oh, that's, a resi- that's really Resident yeah. Evil right there. You find items and have to go backtrack to other rooms to find other items. You find documents that give you kind of hints towards puzzles and what happened at the school because the school has a history and it's supposedly haunted. So there's a lot going on and I do actually really enjoy this so far. Um, it does have a couple of like glitchy stuff that I don't know will be if it'll be fixed or not because... You can move the character and you could just let go of the controller and he will continue walking for about three steps after you have stopped oh. touching the thumbstick. That's that's going to be tricky when you're trying to dodge the janitor. Yeah. And also, when you want to hover the cursor over an item to pick it up or examine it, the cursor's a little wonky, so it takes you a few tries to get it lined up perfectly. So those are really the only two issues I've encountered so far with this game are... The character moves by himself even after you stop for a few extra steps, and then it's kind of a little tricky to land on something until you finally just hit the sweet spot and you get it. But otherwise, it's really great uh, with its tense atmosphere. You know, if you liked the old school Resident Evil games and having limited resources, limited saves, this has that. But there are multiple difficulty levels as well. I'm playing on normal, but I think if you play harder or easier, the janitor is less likely to get you or more likely to get you more often. Okay. And I think you get some extra hints if you go easier as well. I don't know. I mean, it it sounds like you're not digging the gameplay as much, but is the story intriguing enough to keep you going? Because the the initial premise kind of had me going. Oh, I, I like the gameplay. I just... Wish the character wouldn't move by himself <laughs> after I stopped right. moving him. Um, but yeah, the story is pretty interesting. You can do side missions with other students that have snuck into the school. Okay, and so, so there's multiple kids stuck in the labyrinth. Oh yeah, this okay. the school is huge, and it's got they kind of scare you when you meet a new student because they come out of nowhere. You're like, oh my god! It's like, oh, you're 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 another student. Okay, you're not the janitor guy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you can do side. You don't have to do these side missions, or some of them you don't have to do. But um, you do get different endings depending on your likability as a character, which your likability is uh, decided by how many side missions you opt to do. So if you want to get the best ending, you need to do all of these side missions if you can. Mm. But you could totally skip those if you don't care about getting the best ending and you just want to go 
mow through the game. But now this isn't a brand new game either. It's just new to Xbox, right? It's been out for a I while. I believe on this platforms. is its third release. Yeah, I, I feel like this one's been out for like five or six years on other consoles. Yeah, I know it was re-released on PS4 and Xbox One. I think it was originally just PC, maybe. Gotcha. Yeah, I think I think this is the like the next gen release. Right. So you are recommending it more than the other one anyway? Yeah, especially if you like old school survival horror. I think you'd really dig this game. All right. Does it have that, that Korean horror vibe to it? Is it is that really prominent? I haven't come across anything too creepy yet, but I ha- I hope I do. Because okay. I do really enjoy Korean horror and it really does get under my skin, so I do hope they implement that more later on do as you, th- you go. Do you think in Korea that American horror gets under their skin and like this stuff is just so blase to them? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Like they 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 really get terrified of Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> which we just think is funny. I don't know, but I think back in the day people were really really creeped out by by those movies, but and nowadays, yeah, they're, now they're, they're just funny. It became a joke, especially what they did with those movies, like you know, Jason goes to hell and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Oh, look! For the record, I love those movies. It's just they're they're oh, yeah. they're oh, yeah. fun, not scary, not high art, or not like legit horror. I gotcha. Well, thanks for checking that out, Alyssa. Uh, let, keep us posted on how that story wraps up because that sounds pretty interesting. I will. And uh, before we get to the topic, I just want to remind everybody about where you can follow the Gaming Outsider on social media. First off, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the go cast. We have a new member over there by the name of Alonzo Hernandez. So hello, Alonzo. Welcome to the group. Hope you're enjoying the community and uh, all the updates over there. Also, our Discord server is up and running. If you want to come uh, coordinate a Carcassonne game online with me, be sure to hit that up. There is a link for our Discord server in the show notes. Also, drop us a review, please, if you get a chance. It helps us get the word out about the show. And check out our website, thegamingoutsider.com. There you'll find every episode as well as all of our written content, whether that be reviews or uh, editorials that we'll do someday. So be sure to check that out, thegamingoutsider.com. With that, let's go ahead and jump into our From the Outside End topic. It is our first episode of the month, being September. And every first of the month, we always ask the community for questions that we can answer to elicit some good video game discussion and shockingly most of the questions this week were about video games that seems to uh never happen we always get that that oddball i guess there is one or two oddball ones in here but uh most of them are video game related so let's jump right into it we're gonna read the questions that were posted on facebook um discord and twitter and then we'll answer them and hopefully have a good time with it so Alyssa, let's start with you over on facebook okay paul is it hein it is hein hein i wanted to get it right Says, CB's comment about the new PS5 controller has got me thinking, what are your favorite controllers of all time, least favorite, and what do you see in the future out of new pro controllers? Plus, that sound effect for describing the finger (laughs) sausages on the back triggers should be a downloadable alert tone on the website. (laughs) Uh, Paul, you're going to have to hit up uh, Nate Lucas to get that sound bite. (laughs) Is this is this the, make that happen. Is this a soundbite that was making the rounds on our Discord? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Boy, that was something. Did you skip that section of the podcast as no, well? No, I, I I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will say, Paul, if you want to uh, hear a, a a really deep discussion, we'll answer your question here. But uh, way back on episode seventy seven, we talked about the controllers we love. That was actually with the old crew. Um, Almost want to like do another episode on <laughs> I like controllers that you with the new like crew. Three hundred and fifty episodes ago, like it's no big deal. No, I know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there, just so that if, if he wants to hear a discussion about it, that uh, that that has uh, at least some of the crew on that episode. But we, like I said, we'll we'll still answer the question here. You want to start, Zach? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, wouldn't that be like six years ago? Probably. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, I think. I think uh, Paul deserves a better answer. Um, I really like the GameCube controller. The WaveBird man was was actually going to be on my list of one of my I favorites. Mean, the WaveBird is great, but I like the I liked the differently shaped buttons. I like the giant A button, the tiny B button, the curved mm-hmm. X and Y. I I liked all that. I thought it was cool, and and uh, the little like adaptive triggers it had. I like that it had like the hard click. 
uh, past the halfway yep. point. That was super great. I, I love the, the GameCube controller. It's missing, of course, one shoulder button, right? But but yeah. otherwise, it's pretty great. The C-Stick, I guess, isn't... I was just going to say, the C-Stick... <laughs> doesn't, doesn't rotate the same as the analog stick, but I, I never thought of it as being that terrible. Like, I know a lot of people did. but And I also like that the C-Stick was the camera stick, you know? It was very on the nose. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I like the new controller a lot. I, I also like the, um, not the Duke, but the second Xbox controller with the black and white buttons. Yes. Uh, and, and, I, and I know, again, that, well, that, you know, doesn't have the, the second set of shoulder buttons because it has a black and white button, but I like the black and white buttons a lot. I, I like the kind of tiny offset button. It kind of reminds me of the B button on the GameCube controller. So I guess I, guess I like mm. differently shaped buttons. It's fun. It doesn't impact gameplay. I thought it was brilliant on the GameCube because it generally meant that the A button was for the most important action. You know, like it's right. for dodging in Zelda or it's for jumping in, in Mario or whatever. And then and then the B button would be your sword attack or, you know, it, it was kind of the buttons lent themselves well to like what their functions really were. It was cool. Right. So you don't like symmetrical controllers is what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know. I guess... Let's have a little... Can we just bring fun back? Is fun allowed? You know? No. No, I don't think no. it is. They're not called video games anymore. They're video chores. Right. Well, they're video... They're, they're interactives. <laughs> video interactives. <Yes>. <laughs> yeah? What about you, Alyssa? I don't really... I guess I've never really thought about controllers I like or dislike. I mean, as long as I can play it, I'm good with it, but I, I do like the layout of the Xbox controller probably the best. It mm -hmm. just feels more comfortable. Um, I will say those, um, back in the day on the PS2 and PS1, you know, you'd get those controllers, they were, you know, third party. You could see through them, they look cool, but then they would break after a month. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty awful, so we'll go with that. As mad my, cats. Yeah, the Mad oh, yeah. Which now Mad Cats is, you know, a pretty, um, respectable brand right they are i don't maybe i'm thinking of a different one i'm i'm genuinely asking is mad cats a respected brand now i thought they made some like high quality esports controllers or something i might be it's, i might be wrong hey i don't know i i don't pay attention to esports or mad cats so if i'm wrong i'm sorry to everyone listening no problem, hey. i don't know the, the name is forever tainted in my mind just yeah because those of, mad, well, they, you know, third party they publish games now they published the newest rock band didn't they the newest rock band is still like five years old, yeah. right? Yeah. Didn't they have a hand in that? It doesn't matter. We're Obviously, we don't know what the hell we're talking about. We're yeah. only on a video game podcast. <laughs> uh, I, my initial gut reaction always comes back to the Xbox 360 because that controller just felt so good to me when I first played it. But if you go and hold an Xbox 360 controller now after being used to the Xbox One or Xbox Series X, it feels so much smaller by comparison. So I, I don't know. I, I really like the newer designs now for ease and comfort, and especially the PS5 controller. I don't care what CB says. That thing is freaking comfortable. Is it a PS5 it controller? Is. I yeah. love the PS5 controller. Me too. Controller. It's great. It's great. It, it feels really, really good. And like, like you were talking about the clicks on the, on the GameCube controller. You know, the PS5 does that, but it also has that like haptic feedback and yeah. stuff that just oh. feels... It's it's like a new feature that feels natural. I don't know how how they made that happen, but it just re it works. It it, uh, it works great for web swinging. Oh really? Because yeah, like you pull the because you feel it in each finger, probably, right? Yeah, right? You, you pull... you're kind of feeling like you're do you're pressing the the thwip on his uh you know web shooter. It's kind of cool. And oh, I'm gonna have to play that remaster now. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know if it's worth it for just that, but you know, but it's really twenty bucks. It's really cool. I mean, I haven't touched it. I, I literally ran through that game, what, like in the week or two after it released, and I have never touched it since. I don't like sit down and, you know, thwip through the city for leisure like All you right. do. Well, yeah, I got, I got so a city would... protect, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, would be, it would be fun to go through and play that game again in my spare time. Yeah. What about, what about least, so, least favorite? You got a least favorite? Well, hang on. I got, I got oh, okay. one more good one I want to mention before I get to sorry, negatives. And sorry. I, no, I just, I just want to keep on the positivity train a little bit. But I... I still really like the Super Nintendo controller. I know that's a really old old platform, but you know, going from the regular Nintendo to the Super Nintendo just felt like such a jump with a controller alone. I mean, the 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 eight bit jump to sixteen bit jump already was great, 
but that controller just felt solid. You know, like back, like those controllers would were pretty much indestructible, like unless a dog got right. to it or something. Like there was there was no breaking those controllers. Um, I feel like if you broke if you dropped like an Xbox controller or a PS5 controller now, you'd be you'd be at sixty or seventy bucks. Definitely, but dude, yeah, they don't make mm-hmm. electronics like they used to. I remember nope. I mean, they don't make a whole lot of things. Like they used it was either to. GameSpot or X Play back in the day where they went to the the roof of their four story office building and just dropped a GameCube and it still worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, there's no way no way a PS5 is no. surviving a four story drop. No, there's a that pop collar would snap. <laughs> yeah, those right wings off. would be gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, now I'm having flashbacks of the dude that like bought a PS3 on release day. And stood in front of Best Buy in front of everybody and like just smashed yeah, it in front of everybody that. that was like the back of the people. wild west days of the internet. <laughs> well, yeah. There's still Wild West <laughs> internet going on, but uh I don't know, man. Least least favorite controller. What was the one you mentioned, Alyssa? Just the, the, I mean, third, just the party. third party controllers. Yeah. yeah. Um uh, I mean the power glove. <laughs> <laughs> if you consider that it's more of a peripheral, I suppose, yeah. than the controller, even though but that was the thing that looked was such a cool concept when you were a kid, and it just did not work. Right. The, the power cord on the bottom of the Dreamcast was weird. Oh, that's a good point. Like, why would you put the cord on yeah, the bottom? Yeah, I, mean, I still like the Dreamcast controller a lot, but it's just, especially with the little memory card it's slot. Yeah, the VMU. Is it a VMU? Yeah, VMU. But the, the cord on the bottom was certainly a choice. Like, would it have just made sense to flip those around and put the card through the bottom, let it snap in, and then the cord out the back? Because like, nobody has their, their console like next to them. Right. Where like at a 90 degree angle, that might make sense to have a cord there. Nobody does that, right? Yeah. Everybody has a console ahead of them. Like, did they play test that? I just, I can't imagine. I assume it has. Who signed off Because the memory card had a screen, so they probably couldn't put the connecting port up near the screen. So they probably had to be on the bottom. So therefore, the slot had to be at the top of the controller. I'm sure there was a logistical reason. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean it ended up being great. Yeah, so I'm gonna that's a, that's I'm gonna give point, a though. shout out to the six axis launch PS3 controllers. Those were turds. <laughs> I don't remember. Really, what was they didn't even them? have rumble in them. They were super light and oh, flimsy. Yeah. They, they, to the point where they had to put out the DualShock Three, you know, like a year after launch, and then that became the standard in the box for PS3s going forward because the successes were so people wanted rumble. It turned out right, which is a weird thing, like. There's rumble on my controllers, and it's it's never something that I'm like, man, I I have to have rumble. But if it's not there, yeah, it feels weird. Yeah, it's like, now where's my rumble that's, at? That's that's, that's yeah. when you would notice it when you're playing a shooter, like back you're playing Call of Duty, and the like, controller doesn't rumble, and you sh- fire a gun, it would feel weird now, right? Like remember in the N64 days when in order to have rumble in a game, you had to jam this like <laughs> the rumble pack thing up in the <laughs> yeah. the, the rumble pack yeah. in the bottom of your controller. Man, I used to play Star Fox 64 whenever a planet or something would explode, and I think it would just rumble for like 30 <laughs> seconds You're straight. Like, oh my I was god, like, it's yeah. like I'm in the R wing. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, do you remember the the controllers they were gonna put out with the PS3, the giant boomerangs? Oh, dude, yeah. I remember that. Was that a real thing or was no, that, that just was a real. concept? Oh man, damn it! There's got to be one of those that exists out there somewhere, like a prototype or whatever. Oh my god, it looked like a adult toy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of adult toys, remember the remember the controller for the uh, for oh, Res? Oh, the Res uh, vi- was the Trans Vibrator. Yeah, do you know what we're talking about, Alyssa? No. <laughs> so Res is a rhythm game where you play as like a pixelated character flying through a tunnel, um, you know, shooting things in beat with the music. But it was a very trance music type game mm-hmm. where there was like this pulse going all the time, and they made a controller that was more or less like a pad that you would sit on. And it would pulse and beat with the music. Oh, no. And so you can imagine where the jokes went well, with yeah. that. And you can tell how male dominated the industry was back then. Cause they're like, yes, this will, you know, this is, you can feel the vibration or whatever to lull you into a trance or whatever. And then there were all these, there were all these blogs of women going like, hey, this is great for using <laughs> all sorts of purposes. <laughs> yeah. I love how we keep this, you know, PG. Yeah. It's just, hilarious to me <laughs> but so yeah maybe we should put that for the worst controller of all time but well i, mean, it, I think it depends on the woman you ask it's might be the best, that's might be true, the best controller that's true. that's true um did you guys like the n64 controller while we're on talking about the 64 
Uh, well, I don't honestly I don't remember it because I, I, I barely played. You barely played the N64? I only played it for Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know. You missed a lot of good games. I did. Uh, I have a lot of nostalgia fun of swapping from the holding it in the middle to holding it to the two sides or whatever. Yeah. But I'm yeah. sure now I would probably hate that. Mm -hmm. But in my brain, I loved it. So I'm going to say, yeah, I love the controller. I mean, I'm kind of the same way. Nostalgia is definitely a hit with that because I didn't care what was in my hands as long as I was playing Mario 64. Right. When that or, thing came yeah, out. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, Ocarina of Time straight up changed my life. You know? like it, yeah. yeah. Like, th those games were so good, I did not care what was in my hands. But looking back now, like you said, that controller just seems like such a ridiculous design. Uh, but at the same time, that also was the first time I ever strafed in a first-person shooter with a controller. Oh, yeah, with the, the C you know, buttons, that, right? The C buttons, yeah, because, I mean, I know that had, that was something that was done on the PC for forever, but that was a game-changer for me, to be able to, like, move that way and move up. And I, I was one of those weirdos that changed the control scheme to where the, where the C buttons were just the straight movement, you know, and then I aimed with the left stick, so... That that kind of spawned my love for first person shooters because I never had a, a PC machine for games when I was a kid. And so I never got into the Dooms and the Wolfensteins and things like that. So yeah. So I, I definitely am look at that controller with rose colored glasses, but it it just looks so silly. Like, right. Like, well luckily I'll never have to know. I'll never pick up an N sixty four controller in my life probably. Oh, you know what? I did. I played a lot of Mario Kart 64 in my uh, one of my apartments back with my roommate Sean. Shout out to Shawnee mm -hmm. Mac, and we played a lot of Mario Kart, and still love those controllers just fine. But that was also oh, yeah. know, the only game we played on that. And you really don't you don't have to like keep swapping between you know sticks or anything on that. Right. Plus, remember that thing had four ports on it. You could plug four controllers yeah. in it. That was a big deal at the time, too. Right. Well, it had, it had split screen of a technological marvel that uh, Microsoft cannot reproduce in modern video games. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Mario Kart 64, as much as I loved Ocarina of Time, I probably put way more time in Mario Kart 64 than I did in any other 64 game. Yeah, well, it's just, it's, yeah, that's why I kind of hate Mario Kart. Even though, because it's a, it's a game everybody wants to play, because it's a game anybody can play, right? I feel like I played more Mario Kart than anything in my life, just based on right. people coming but, over. Oh, dude, those multiplayer maps, and not even the it wasn't even about the racing when I was a kid. It was always about the the battle. Oh you know, yeah, well, especially on the sixty four, the the battle maps yeah. were great on the sixty four. They had that one that was just like a giant circle. Yeah, remember that yeah. one? Or I like the one where it was like four towers that you had to climb up. Yep. Yeah. Man, Zach, you need to you need to live closer so we can just have a slumber party and play Mario Kart. That'd be kind of yeah, that'd be kind of cool. We'll find an NC. You have an N sixty four? I'm sure you do. I can acquire one quite yeah. easily. I'm friends with C. Right, he's yeah, he's just a phone call away. <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you have no? But I've got access. Right. That's just yeah. that's always the answer. Hey Scott, do you have this? No, but I have access. Hey CB, are you free? Yes, always. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Well, Paul, I hope you got your money's worth on that question. Because, um, yeah, that was that was a good one. So thanks for bringing that up. And, Zach, why don't you take the next one? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Wow, we really got a lot of that. We really went some places with that uh, controller question. <laughs> sure, Sean did. Coates writes in and asks, with all the news about Sony increasing PS5 price, I assume, uh, I'm wondering if you guys think it was a mistake to release new consoles in the midst of a pandemic and global ship shortage. Also, a semi-related question, when do you think games will stop being released on last-gen systems entirely? I'm betting on Q3 2023. Mm, that's two really interesting questions. Mm -hmm. Tough questions. Uh, I don't think it was a mistake. Clearly not. Because they, they're selling. Well, they, yeah. what did they, what did they, would PlayStation make a $1.6 billion in profit last year? Yeah, it's hard to say that's gonna be, that would be a mistake at all. Well, I mean, during the pandemic, things they considered hobby items, which were game consoles as well, the sales just increase because people were at home a lot they just wanted yep. to play something do something so i think sales yeah, actually the funny increased, thing is is but... they had something to play yeah they they just wanted the new hotness and those stimulus checks made it easier to well, make that's that true. decision so i i don't think it was a mistake because the money was there they if they hadn't released those consoles that money would not have flowed to them quite as well so 
to answer your question, Sean, no, I don't think it was a mistake for from a business standpoint. But from a industry standpoint, that's a tougher question to me because it all even though it was a new console generation, it doesn't feel like one. You know what I mean? Like, like everything. I own both new, both current gen consoles, and I like the performance of them. But I didn't buy them because I had to have them in order to play some new game I wanted to play. It was just like having the newest, latest hardware more than anything else. What do you think, Zach? Do I think it was a mistake to release new consoles in the midst of a pandemic? No. Yeah. No. It was. It was. Uh, Quite savvy, in fact, especially because people were people were stuck at home, man, looking for stuff to do, escapes to have, or whatever. And I think you know, as as the world becomes more normalized, I'm sure the profits will actually probably shrink a little bit. You know, the mm-hmm. the, the numbers that we were seeing in the pandemic, I just don't think are quite sustainable. Uh, but yeah, both PS5 and Xbox, are just, you know, they sell out as soon as they hit the shelf. So no, definitely, definitely not a mistake. I you know, I I didn't feel the need to upgrade. I I only did because. Sony sent me an email saying, hey, do you want to buy one? I'm like, yeah, I guess I may as well now rather than... The good thing I did. Who knows? It could be $700 in two years. Who, yeah, at the rate they're going. <laughs> um, That's going to be our mentality now. Whereas before it was like, I'll wait till later when it's cheaper. Now it's like, I better get it now before it gets more expensive. Well, yeah, consumers have no power anymore. The, all the brands do. The the mm-hmm. idea remember when they announced the PS3 and they're like six hundred dollars we we believe our customer oh, yeah. or our customers will get a second job to afford one and everyone said screw you we're buying Xbox nowadays it would be everybody would be like yeah I would yeah yeah I would get a second job to get my PlayStation what an honor and then and then people on Twitter the sad good people point. on Twitter would call you an <laughs> idiot for not getting a second job yeah I think I'm just getting an Xbox and said of course you would you loser I'm like what yeah. Anyway, people make no sense. <laughs> anyway, the point is, yeah, no, it's, I don't think it's a bad idea. It worked out well for them. Uh, I think we're seeing with the games being released, it, is, it was not a necessary jump by any means. I still can't think of a single PS5 game I played that wouldn't have been possible on PS4. Dark Souls? Or not Dark Souls, um, Demon Souls. No, I played, I played that game on PS3. It was very possible. No, I know. I'm talking, about, I, but I haven't. I haven't played. It. I don't know how pretty it looks. Yeah, no. Demon Souls might be one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen, but I also I'm not. I'm not the technical guy. You know, like it, right. That th- this is not. It didn't have any new ideas or anything exciting. It's just. It was just Demon Souls. Are we a dying breed? People that would would get more excited about new mechanics and and new, you know, ideas instead of more realistic looking graphic based on the fact that they switch out sales of ps5 and xbox every month no yeah that's a good point it's just where the those are just the loudest people on the internet the people complaining about god of war boat animations are not a significant portion but everyone complains about the boat animations and then the even more annoying group of people who complain about the people complaining about the boat animations prop up so it feels like oh my god all anybody's talking about is boat animations but really it's like just twitter <laughs> For like a, you know, 45 second portion. Yeah. Um, yes. But, but in reality, especially if you just look at the sales numbers of the, of the best selling games ever, you know, Minecraft, also one of the ugliest games ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I no, I don't think we're a dying breed, but I think publishers have tricked a significant enough portion of the audience to think that's what matters. By the way, that is the number one question I get asked of my students. When they find out I love to play video do you games, play Minecraft is Mr. Clark. Do you play Minecraft? <laughs> and the look of disappointment <laughs> and uh, loss of respect oh, I get no. from them when I say I've actually never played <laughs> Minecraft, guys. I'm sorry, I just I've never got into it, and they just they just look so disappointed. No, they're probably like it's this like, old man doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But then I but then I turn it around sometimes because they'll they'll mention something about a game. I can't remember which one it was, but a kid named the title of the game, and I went, "Oh, did you mean this?" And what about this part in the game? And he just, I'm having an, I'm having a conversation with this with an adult. Yeah. This is a, this is crazy. That's, that's pretty yeah, cool. That's good. So, all right. Next question comes from Discord, and it is Rusty. He says, kind of bouncing off last week's topics on companion pets. What's your favorite video game duo where both characters are significantly responsible for completing the game? If I'm going classic, I'm picking Banjo Kazooie myself. For more contemporary, I'd pick Joel and Ellie from Last of Us Part 1. Alyssa, 
what is your favorite video game duo or or uh yeah that's really tricky because joel and ellie are a solid team i did really enjoy uh cal kestis and bd1 because they are they're a fantastic team see he's a pet to me a cute little doggo bd1 yeah. or cal kestis <laughs> well I, I, <laughs> that's a different that's a different podcast conversation <laughs> That's just the first one that came it. to my mind. I love it when you break Alyssa. Like she has this <laughs> moment like, am I allowed to laugh? <laughs> <laughs> Zach, how about you? Oh man, uh, it's, it's, I feel like it's tough to top Nate and Sully. You know, yeah, they're great. Especially in Uncharted 3 where you just get a lot of them together. That's really, that's really good stuff. Um, I love that feeling of like, is Sully betraying me? Right. Like it really feels like Sully is. You definitely get that in the first game. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, but Uncharted is just great with any pairing, really. Even even uh, mm -hmm. Chloe and Nadine and Lost Legacy are, are great together. Uh, you know, yeah. everybody but Sam Drake is just a great character. You know, yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> everybody. But everybody. Sam. Uh, it, <laughs> he felt just kind of shoehorned. He, in. Yeah, he's he so did. obviously like yes. <laughs> He, An afterthought. Yeah, he is, he is a Neil Druckmann character in a Amy Hennig world. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Banjo. I mean, Banjo Kazooie are obviously great. Jack and Dax are wonderful. They they play so well off each other, especially as Jack gets angrier, but Dax remains the same level of comedic relief, and he just has to like readjust to Jack's new world. You could never get away with a character like Dax in the same age, of course, the way he ogles every woman's boobs. But he was. He was hilarious, nonetheless. I've never played a Jack and Daxter game. They're great. You know, I, I have no either. idea what I'm missing. What? What is both of you? <laughs> yeah. Oh my! I played God. Ratchet and Clank though. Okay, Ratchet and Clank's good. Not as good as Jack and Daxter, <laughs> of course. But I know totally different studios as Where's well. Where's that remaster? Jack and Daxter. Yeah. Yeah. I would love. I would love that. That would be great. You know, yeah, do that, I'd do play that. it. Sly Cooper. Yeah, let the modern audiences play it. Sony. Sly Cooper is another one I wish I had played. That game looked super fun. What is going on? Did you I, skip the PS2? Dude, I, I, I didn't play it I, either. I played I played early PS2 games. I didn't play a ton of the, the later stuff. They had collections on PS3, you know, guys. Yeah, and if you got the in the Sly Cooper collection, if you had gotten a platinum and all three Sly, they secretly had a trailer for Sly Cooper Four, which wasn't a, that's how they announced that game. Oh, that's I, games do that more. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, well, I mean, it which, wouldn't it because, wouldn't work now in a world of YouTube. Well, yeah, and because Scott, we would have to let fun back into video games, and as we were discussed, <laughs> that's not allowed. I w I'm going to throw a, a Dark Horse companion duo I like is Archer and Kestrel and Splinter Cell uh, Co-op. They play well off each other. There's a, U, a U.S. Right. operative and a Russian operative, so they obviously hate each other right away. But then they learn to love each other, and then and then there's a pretty great twist at the end of the story campaign. I also wish we had like dedicated co-op stories like we did back in the 360 era. Oh man, uh, Kanan Lynch. Yeah, well that that's good too. Army of Two. But remember, but remember, like, oh, the, here's a single player story, but then the co-op story is actually a different story altogether. That happens like oh, alongside it. That was cool. Like the Splinter Cell Conviction co-op campaign is a prequel to Splinter Cell Conviction, and that's just a neat. Right. That's a neat way to tie it in. Uh, does Marcus and Dom count? Because I think oh. I feel like that's more of a foursome than. Yeah, I think definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would probably make my list, although it's kind of low hanging fruit. That's great, man. I, yeah, um, no, I that's, talk that's a wonderful choice. I I know I talk about this game way too much for a game I haven't played in a decade, but. Uh, Garcia, Hotspur, and Johnson are just just one of my favorite <laughs> duos in a game. If you have not played that game, please do so. I, I can't. It's so weird. Um, but those are the those are the big ones that that came to came to mind. Obviously, I mean, you know, other than low hanging fruit ones like Mario and Luigi, right. but that near near and they're not really near and Vice, of course. Right. Yes. Yeah. Nice. They're great. <laughs> David Newman asks, what is a game you wish you would have reviewed, whether someone else reviewed it, you never finished it, or you played too far after release? Oh, man, that's such a great question. Right. Which is, which is, what, I, I have which a, is what anybody says when they're buying time to answer. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no. 
I, I'm really not because it's it's not that I'm buying time. It's that my list in my head is way too long. Really? <laughs> like, I, I mean, well, number one, because I haven't been reviewing games when things like Ocarina of Time released. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I wasn't reviewing games when I was a kid and, and some of my favorite titles of all time. Could you imagine me being able to go back to like 94 and reviewing Link to the Past, which would become my favorite game of all time? Like. If I still had that review from when I was 14 years old and to be able to read what, <laughs> you know, 25 year, years ago, Scott said about this game and, and like, I would love to still have that. You know what I mean? That, that's one of the cool things about having our website is when we do write a review, it's always going to be there. I can go back and look at it, but anything that I did for my childhood, I don't have. Wow. So Zach, since it, apparently you've got an answer in your head, what, Whoa, what uh, would who you Who said that? Who, who said I had an answer ready? <laughs> Nobody said that. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Alyssa, how about you? I mean, I I don't think I've ever been jealous of anyone getting a review over me because the way we, you know, get reviews is just first come, first serve, technically. Mm -hmm. But I've never been jealous of anyone getting a game or anything. Um, kind of like what Scott said, some of my favorite games from the past when I wasn't writing reviews, you know, I would have loved to have written those. Written reviews for I don't those, get jealous but... of people getting reviews, but I'm jealous of people that have more time to play them. Like, like if I, I would have loved to have rev um, reviewed the last Assassin's Creed game, but I just don't have the time to play it like CB does. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm je I'm jealous that yeah. Scott didn't review Skyward Sword because then I could have just dodged that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got to like the second dungeon of that game, and I was like, "That's enough of that." Yeah. Turd. See what a, what now, a privilege I'm, I'm that sure. I'm sure CB wishes someone else would have reviewed, uh, reviewed, reviewed Tour de France because <laughs> oh, I will never forget him ranting about that game. Right, it's gonna oh, it's gonna stick with him forever. Every year I get a press release on that game, I just forward it to him and say, "Hey, do you want, do you want me to get your review cap for this one?" Right, he's established with the brand now that they respect his opinion. Well, because that was also a very early like review when he joined, kind of like you and Elix. Like it was like one of your first reviews, and you're like, "I'm gonna finish this game. I don't care how." Yeah, much. oh, that game sucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, and didn't Brian Brian Regal said he recently finished the second one? He's like, "Yeah, it's it's better than the second one, but it's 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 pretty much the same thing." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, Zach's not gonna play that game." <laughs> I almost didn't want to check out Elix two just out of you know like respect to the first review I had on the site or whatever, or one of, mm -hmm. and uh, but and just how much I dogged that game over the years. But I just couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to do it for the. For the lulls, yeah, I I couldn't. <laughs> you could tell. It, uh, I'm not, I'm maybe misreading this, Zach, but it almost felt like, oh man, if I don't finish this game, I might not get on this podcast or something <laughs> yeah. like that. I don't know what you were, what if that went through your head. But I was like, I was like, dude, if it's you know 120 hours of garbage, like I don't, you know, yeah, I don't expect you to suffer <laughs> through that. I guess it's just my own my I own want, pride. No, I know. I get it. I'm I'm often the same way. I mean, there's been there's been times I haven't finished games that I've reviewed just because I well, some games like roguelikes and stuff, you know, they they just go on for infinity or whatever. But or racing games, you know, like do you do you have to like get a hundred percent on everything and you know to to review a racing right. game? I don't know. Yeah, I you know I can think of one game I wish I would have reviewed as Fantasian, which was an Apple Arcade exclusive JRPG. But they had like mm -hmm. a weird, it had part, it released in parts one and two. And then like, I think part one was at the end of, you know, 2019 or something in the beginning. And then the second part was the beginning of the next year. So I was like, oh, I'll wait for part two and then review it. And then, you know, part two came out and I didn't have Apple Arcade anymore. And I was like, am I really going to remember what happened, you know, four or five months ago in this game? So I just never got around to finishing it really. But I wish, I wish I would have, and I wish I would have reviewed it because, it's, that was a really great JRPG from uh, you know Sakaguchi, the the father of Final Fantasy. But it was just mm -hmm. I don't understand why that game had, that game was so Final Fantasy, like very a lot of Final Fantasy Nine energy, in fact. And it was Iwamatsu's last composition, you know, it had all these things going for it. But it was a freaking Apple Arcade exclusive, so I wish I could have reviewed it to get the word out there more for people. But uh, yeah, I just I can't. I can't subscribe to a streaming service for one show. I can't subscribe to Apple Arcade for one game. I just right. don't. Yeah. I just don't want to be 
on that same vein, in, in terms of JRPG, I could say the same thing about Octopath Traveler. And I, I say I can't review that game because I didn't finish it because I hit a grind wall. Like that game was really interesting and, and did some very fun things. And I love the battle system. But there just becomes a point where you can't pr- proceed unless you just go do some XP farming. And that just kind of you know, brought the game to a screeching halt for a guy like me that was just adoring the game up to that point. But thankfully, we got Live Alive. Right. Which I still have yet to play. That you know, because because it seems like they're doing the graphic style in that vein, and uh, man, I would just love to see some classic JRPGs given that treatment. Chrono Trigger just makes sense to me. I want to play that so bad, dude. It would make so much money, (laughs) like just ridiculous. I Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, but I really, you know, Final Fantasy VI is obviously great as well, but I feel like Chrono Trigger has that reputation where I, I yeah i do think it you do the hd the 2d hd re-release of that game i think it's gonna sell a few million copies mm-hmm. like for real easily and, and they could bring back that ad oh my god i do love that ad which is a black screen that just says good morning chrono but they could do it where good morning chrono is in like a fancier font oh right so it, like, that looks like or the it, it looks kind of the same but just like in a higher definition kind of so thing. like add some kind of depth of field to the black background yeah yeah, yeah. Hire me, Square Dude. Enix. Seriously. <laughs> hey, we both had the idea, man. Come on, let's yeah, go. Let's you're right. Yeah, okay, you, you know, I'm leaving you behind in the dirt. <laughs> you, but yeah, you I mean, teaching too much. You don't want to work at Square Enix. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that felt like a dig. <laughs> no, you love teaching. <laughs> I do. But I also like money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um. But yeah, yeah, David, my easy answer is pretty much anything that I played before I became a, a, a I don't know if I want to say a legit critic, but before I became a critic. Uh, but some are like games that I just wasn't a fan of, that I want, that I, you know, I'm never the contrarian person, but there were games that people just lauded and praised as like this best thing ever, and I just didn't get it, and I wanted to be that one voice of, guys this game isn't as good as you guys think it is and for me that's journey i would have loved to have written like a negative review for that oh, game boy. and just be that one oddball i just did not like that game hey, is he, at all as a one guy who gave bioshock Infinite a six out of ten it's not as fun as it might seem <laughs> yeah. to be the one negative voice or even worse when i get but six out of ten is even negative no well that's... or i was gonna say even no. worse is when i give the last of us an eight out of ten and everyone acted like i had given it a one or something and I was like, eight out of ten means really good, guys. Like it's I'm actually surprised you gave that an eight out of ten after hearing you talk after going back and remembering what that gameplay was like. Well that that was my critique in the thing. I was like, there's two puzzles and they repeat them ad nauseum. Right. It's really strange that no 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 other review is pointing out that this game has two puzzle types. Yep. Oh my god. Yeah, that's kind of it's, a fact. it's the water. We gotta find a pallet for Ellie <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I wonder if they remedied that. In the, they couldn't have, no, right? Because it's just... Uh, I feel like that would, would kind of change the texture of the game too much, right? I would have... You'd think. Yeah. Did you Did you see what Angry Joe did for his Last of Us review? I did not. Uh-uh. He just re-uploaded his same review from 2014 in higher <laughs> definition. Oh, that's brilliant. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of brilliant, That's actually. hilarious. Uh, good stuff. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh who is up? Brandon Lloyd? Yeah. Do you want me to read should I read that or yeah. Oh, are you, I don't remember who read the last I one. Yeah, I read I the remember. last one. We're gonna, oh, yeah, we're exactly. gonna a lot of tangents, a lot of fun happening here. We're trying to bring fun back to the video game industry, one podcast episode at a time. I know. Brandon <laughs> Lloyd writes in well, ooh, this is gonna drain the fun right out. Brandon Lloyd writes in, how do you feel about Sony increasing prices of the PlayStation 5 in all territories outside of the USA and having $70 games and all, then also complaining about Microsoft buying Activision being anti-consumer while they are raising prices and buying third-party AAA game exclusivity? Brandon, it's a joke out there. <laughs> First of all, yeah, oh, Sony. Oh, Sony. Why do you do this to me? I, I, love, play, I, you know, I love PlayStation, but I'm watching Jim Ryan just destroy yeah. it. Don't understand. I love PlayStation as well, but seeing that all written all together, it's just like, 
Oh my, that's that's terrible. You well, you like you read all the things Sony are do, is doing, and you're like, man, I feel like I should feel bad for them. They obviously must be hurting, right? They have to raise prices and nickel and dime their consumers. I mean, it must just really be tough for them out there. But it's really just uh, you know unhinged corporate greed. Unbelievable. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't like the price hike to seventy dollars, but at the same time. I kind of understand it because games yeah. haven't increased in price in 20 years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They just yes. had to be yeah, the, you know, there's, there's also there had to be somebody to flinch. Tens of millions of more people who are buying games than they used to. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. So they, the only increase in cost nowadays outside of, you know, I mean, the, the, the games do cost more in development, but the bigger, you know, to... to appease the extra demand is just to make extra copies which is far cheaper than making a more expensive game does that make sense what i just said it made sense in my head uh, not super i don't know i'm not as i'm not <laughs> as upset about the 70 dollars games it just makes me a more discerning consumer i'm just going to buy less games at that price right because yeah. you know as much sure game prices haven't gone up that much you know in 20 years or whatever but neither has my wage like you know the minimum wage is still <laughs> yeah. what it was so 70 dollars that's yeah that's significantly more than it used to be i haven't paid 70 bucks for a game have either of you i don't think i have no i have not yeah and i love how like we all every, everybody on the internet and twitter is like i'm not paying 70 dollars for you know a game and then i'm seeing all these people man last of us part one looks great <laughs> yeah it's funny how it's usually the same so, accounts uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, to Brandon's actual question, yeah, it makes Sony look silly, but Microsoft is also looking silly in this back and forth stuff about Activision because because mm-hmm. while PlayStation is ludicrous and they're like, there's just no chance for us to compete at all in this industry if they have Call of Duty, whilst being the number one selling console is hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and with you know Microsoft publicly saying so many times, like, it's going to be on PlayStation, guys chill out um but it's also it's also like funny watching microsoft go like you you know call of duty is like it's you know yeah i guess it sells a lot but it kind of sucks right like there's nothing original (laughs) about it or or interesting at all like you're paying 70 billion dollars for mostly for call of duty what are you what are you trying to sandbag your own franchise for right now (laughs) (laughs) that's just a very bizarre thing to do like it makes you when you say that it makes it look like your business decision was a poor one. Right. It's what you're saying. We also all know it's just nonsense. Right. Yeah. Why would they say that? What would be the point of saying that? Well, I I think it was in Brazil specifically where it's it's been a little more contentious to get approval. So they're really trying to be Mm -hmm. like, hey, Call of Duty doesn't do anything original or exciting at all, guys. So I I don't even know why we're talking about Call of Duty. What's Call of Duty? Never even heard of it. (laughs) This is really funny. (laughs) But, uh, But PlayStation's really been looking like a fool out there during this. Absolutely. Because they, cause they have to have the right. worst business practices. There's no better marketing for Xbox than PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> There's your tweet, man. You need to make that. <laughs> I want to see that on Twitter tomorrow. Okay, I'll keep it in mind. Yeah. But, uh, should totally do that. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, we've talked about the increased price of PlayStation 5, but, but then on top of everything else, it just is so bizarre to me that a, a console gets more expensive with age. That just... Yeah. Well, and especially it's like... Just, you know, and then Xbox and Nintendo are like, we don't have, no, we're not going to be raising our prices. So it doesn't, it, it immediately undercuts your idea like, hey, we have to, you know, it's manufacturing reality. We have to increase our prices. If that was true, your competitors would do so. So it's not true at all. Yeah. Yeah. You just know that people will pay it. They're looking at those scalper prices that everybody is willing to pay. Yeah, definitely. And mm-hmm. they're like, we want to get some of those dollars. Right. I think you're exactly right. But we're not going to do it in America because Xbox actually has, is, you know, it beat us there for a few months in a row there. So, you know, mm-hmm. we can't we can't afford to let that territory slide. I mean, you mean the, the Game Pass machine? Right. Hey, it works. <laughs> it totally <laughs> it does, does work. Does. All right, next question comes from Mark Zemanski. Uh, any games from the upcoming holiday season that you're looking forward to? Callisto Protocol. That's it. <laughs> That's... Yo, Gotham yeah. Knights. Oh yeah, what did we get wrong about Gotham Knights last week? By the way, that you yelled at us. Oh, for? it's not that it's not it's not set in the Arkhamverse. I don't. Did I say no, that? No, CB said that. Oh, okay. CB's wrong a lot. 
<laughs> I can understand the confusion because Batman does he doesn't really die, but he seems to die at the end of Arkham Knight. So you can mm-hmm. see why this game might take place in that universe, but they have loudly and often repeated it is not set in the Arkhamverse. The Suicide Squad game is set in the Arkhamverse. Oh, so that's where he'll come back to life? Well, you see... Or it's revealed that he didn't actually Somebody's die. driving the Batmobile. We don't know who, you know, it could be. It could be one of the Robins or could be Bruce Wayne, yeah. Could be Bruce Wayne possessed by the Joker. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I, I, I agree. I think Gotham Knight should be in the Arkhamverse. I think it's weird that the first time you see the Justice League in the Arkhamverse, they're going to be shooting them in the head. But, you know, <laughs> to each their own. That's a good point. Yeah. Anything else you guys are looking forward to specifically this uh, holiday? Uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to Callisto Protocol, Callisto, yeah. uh, God of War, Ragnarok, Sonic Frontiers. Tales. Dude, I don't understand why people are upset with what that game is showing. It looks so much fun. I agree. So I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I apologize. Oh, I, was, I think the last one I was going to mention, Bayonetta 3 comes out this year, right? Oh, yeah, it does. Allegedly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if Allegedly. it comes out this year, yeah. I'm looking forward to that as well. I think it has a release date. I think it's the 28th, so it's like you know, three days after Gotham Knights. So I don't know if Bayonetta 3 is going to make the cut right away for me, but I'm definitely yeah. excited about Bayonetta 3. Uh, but you're right, Plague Tale. I forgot Plague Tale's coming out uh, October 18th, I think. So yeah, that'll be a big one. And then I'm, I'm looking forward to Solstice, which comes out on the 20th. And it just kind of looks like Berserk, but with a lady. So I'm into that. Hmm. Uh, and then uh, does Phantom Hellcat come out? Th- is Phantom Hellcat next year? That game really blew me away. Did that just get announced? Yeah, but like, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Games, games, there's no uh, cadence or rhythm to when games get announced versus released. I know, but I mean, getting announced in, you know, August, coming out in within the next six months, that's a Bethesda move. Well, it's, you know, Voice of Cards got announced four days ago. It's coming out on the 13th. Yeah. Yeah. There's no... What is... what is? Oh, Valkyrie Elysium? I'm really excited about that game coming out at the end of September, because that, like that looks like a very mid-tier action RPG. Looks fairly linear as well. Dude, it's the kind of stuff I need being published by Square Enix. I don't know what Square Enix's holiday strategy is, because it just seems like they're just dumping 17 games. You know, Valkyrie Elysium, Voice of Cards. There's a Star Ocean game coming out in October. Star Ocean? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot I about Star that one. Star Ocean in forever. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they're putting out a bunch of trailers for it, but I don't know anybody that's talking about it, so I don't, I don't know if Star Ocean is going to really uh, hit the way they're hoping. And are we certain that God of War Red and Rock is going to release... Yeah, I think this, it, went, this it went gold. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. Just, that just feels like one that they were gonna, they're, they're going to pull out from one of their... Their lack of marketing is strange. Right. Yeah, that is strange. Uh, but they, I know they have the Game Informer cover, but yeah, it, uh, their lack of marketing is almost like, is there some big plot twist within the first minute you're trying not to spoil or something? You know, because you're not showing anything off. Is this yeah. a Metal Gear Solid 2 situation? Do we not... Kratos dies in the first two minutes, so we're... Play as Atreus. We play as Atreus for the entire time. Yeah. Thor, Thor just bashes in Kratos' head with Mjolnir. So you're stuck playing. Dude, honestly, I would be kind of excited if they did that. It'd be kind of tight. It would be. And then, and then just watch everybody get super PO'd. Right, yeah. This is the worst game ever. I was going to say, last time Sony pulled the trick of killing off the main character, it didn't go so well. Despite it being... Well, I mean, even look at, look at uh, Last of Us Part 2, where they, you know, the thing they didn't tell everybody they were doing in that game. Well, that, and people got mad. That was what I was subtly trying to reference. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That... <laughs> but that's okay. okay. That's one of their best games in yeah years. A ten out of ten. The gaming outsider would say. Did you get that a ten out of ten? Yeah, that's what Part Two is amazing. I yeah. yeah. The I game we never game. knew we wanted. I know. Yeah. I, I there was nobody less interested in Last of Us Part Two than me. Why are they even making this stupid game, man? They, they the first game was perfect. This is stupid. I can't stand this. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah all right uh boy next question goes to Alyssa. scott Bors asks i was wondering how you guys deal with people who make snarky comments about the fact that you play video games one of my coworkers has been doing this to me for 26 years how do you have the same job the last for 26 couple- years yeah. and 
madness. But the anyway. last couple of weeks, it has gotten a lot worse. I get that all people don't play games, but I don't get why they care so much about what I'm doing in my free time. Normally, I just brush it off, but when insults, but with insults, I guess if there was a strategy guide for this, like your video games get said to me, I'm about to snap. Any suggestions would be great. I, suggestion number one, I've Scott, doing- just snap. Just lose it on I this, would have dude. snapped already after 26 years. <laughs> That's a long time. You have the patience of a saint. Uh, Scott, Scott, yeah, I, I have to say something. No, it's okay. You, you, it threw me off. I, when you said Scott, and like oh. you, were, oh, you were talking man. to me, so I was like having this moment of like, what? Okay, <laughs> uh, no, like I've been dealing with this since I was a kid. You know, back when it wasn't cool to like video games. When, it, you know, even if it wasn't sports, you know, you, you were you were dumb if you weren't into sports. Uh, so, I, I don't really have any advice, uh, you know, other than. I mean, just combat it with, well, what are you into? I try to learn what they're into. And then they say, oh, I'm into sports. I'm like, oh, you like watching people get paid millions of dollars to play children's games? Right. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, or, or whatever. Like, I, it, I, I will never forget this. I had a conversation with my father-in-law when I was a kid. And I was trying to learn how to fix a car. I am not... uh savvy when it comes to vehicles and machines and engines i just i just i i I would get so frustrated because stuff wouldn't work the way it's supposed to and i will never forget something that my stepfather would say to me in a condescending way was just imagine that you're trying to save the princess and then this will make sense to you he was like if this were a video game basically he was saying if this were a video game you would try he was telling me i wasn't trying Mm -hmm. and i just that stuck with me so bad and it took until I was 40 years old um, when my father-in-law was, was living, or not my father-in-law, my stepfather was living with me, and he saw what I was doing with the podcast, and he saw how I was using video games to relate to my students. He actually came up to me and apologized and said, I'm sorry for, for giving you such grief when you were a kid and, and saying you were obsessed with, with games. Um, I, I never understood your passion, and um, I see you know, what you've done to turn something that you love into a positive that I didn't understand. And that made me feel validated more than anything in a really long time for, you know, when it comes to video games, because, but I'm not saying your coworker, Scott, is going to have come to that same realization as you. Um, but in today's day and age, it's, it's, it's hard to understand that mentality still exists because of how massive the video game industry is. Right. It, it, it dwarfs the Hollywood you know, income every year. Right. You know, like yeah. It's... Like, like that. Maybe that's what you used to do, Scott. Like, do you watch movies? You know that the video game industry makes it's like five times more money. It's insane yeah, than than films. Like, w- what's the deal? Or, like, or make or you... make fun of him that he can he can't figure out how to play video games. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, I'm never gonna condone like being mean. No, like, please, yeah. please be mean. <laughs> Just remember, well, just, just remember, Mr. Boars, because I can't call you Scott. It'll be too confusing. Just remember, you're better than this guy. <laughs> he can't figure out how to hold the controller. That's yeah. true. In my case, I've never had anyone say anything snarky about, you know, me playing games or any of my other interests. And generally, if I get, you know, negative feedback from strangers or, you know, people I just don't know, I kind of just brush it off because they don't know me. I don't know them. It does get trickier when you're close to the person and they're they judge you whether it's for your video games or other interests. And I'm not the best person to ask for advice for that because I get very hurt by it. Um again Didn't you just post a TikTok where you said someone like it was like someone was saying like maybe you should grow up and you yeah, just it was a sound. and go, no. Yeah. <laughs> like and I I'm not gonna, you know, Again, that's kind of like if so, some random person says it to me, I'm like, I don't care. It's just if someone close to me says it or someone I'm acquaint more well acquainted with says it, I do get upset. And right. Um, I have to work on it as well, Mr. Boars. But uh, yeah, we'll go on this journey together. We'll go on this journey together of, you know, <laughs> uh, toughening our skin up and, you know, just. Like, with my likes, they're stress relief for me. 
And if I don't get to, you know, play games or watch anime or whatever, I become very, very stressed out. And if it's stress relief for you, ask the guy, I'm assuming it's a guy, um, ask them, well, what do you do to relieve stress? And if they say nothing, just say maybe you should try playing a game. See if that helps. Or just be the, you know, the opposite and, and be supportive of the thing that they do for stress relief. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of like, I mean... I uh, my my initial answer was to you know call them out on if they like sports, which again I like sports. Don't get me wrong, but you know, just be super supportive. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. You know, um, I have a co- I'm lucky that my my coworker who is going to be retiring next year, and I'm going to miss her terribly. She doesn't probably has never played a video game in her life. She has no interest whatsoever, but she genuinely engages in me in conversation with the podcast and, and, you know, the convent R2V2 and, and, you know, whenever I tell her a story about some cool that happened, I just got this awesome press kit, in the mail, uh, and she will actively listen and show interest. You know what I mean? There's something to be said about listening to somebody and something that they're interested in, even if you're not. So turn it around and, yeah you know, kill them with kindness. Disagree. <laughs> I was going to say, no. I can see Zach like shaking his <laughs> no head, way. even though he's not. <laughs> don't kid. Don't I do- kid. I agree with being kind, but I can see that it could also backfire, and the yeah. the coworker will still just keep pestering. Oh yeah, it's not I'm stop. a big believer in act like an asshole, get treated like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't don't kill him with kindness. Just be rude. Why do you? Why do you care? With I'm more curious why you care what this person thinks at all. Because I would just yeah. I would just brush it off as I don't I don't care that you don't. Like that, I play video games. What do I care? Also, just like yeah, but Zach, you you have that thing that you can turn that like you have that thing in your head that you don't care what people think. There are people like Scott and myself that, for some irrational reason, care what people think about us. But and but I'm in the middle it, where it I don't care where the majority of people think about what I do, but the people close to me, I get very hurt if they you know critique me or <laughs> you know they say something about my interest or whatever yeah i'm I mean, envious of you yeah and I, don't, I don't know not now and i feel weird um but no i wish i had your <laughs> qualities sure. that because my mom is the same way and i'm like i wish i would have inherited that from my mom because i got my dad's kindness and well for me for it me, doesn't help me sometimes <laughs> scott scott poor scenario is just like you're just obviously you're so obviously in the right you know like this this person is clinging on to the long dead past. Video games make more money. Video games are telling you know legitimate stories. Video games are being adapted into movies and TV shows at an accelerated rate mm-hmm. because people you know have realized the value of their storytelling. So like it's just this person's out of touch, man. Like they they just don't understand the reality of the world. Mm-hmm. They they sound like somebody who wants to watch Netflix via DVDs in the mail to me. Like this, <laughs> this person <laughs> has no idea what the real world is like. Oh man, that's a great line. There's, there's a, I, I don't know how much you watch TikTok, but there's a series of videos on TikTok where these guys will say insults to somebody in their backswing on the golf course. Like, you look like this, or you look like that, uh-huh. and you look like you still want DVDs for Netflix service. <laughs> like, it would just be like a great one for that series. Okay. And <laughs> gonna send that one in. But all right, uh, next question comes, uh, it goes to Zach actually. Uh, Drew Ross writes in, what TV size and model do you game on? What is your dream TV that you would love to have if price wasn't a problem? Boy. I feel like I got a really boring answer. Uh, I don't care. That's yeah. kind of my... I mean, I game on a 50-inch. I don't know what model I have. I have a Hisense TV. It's a 4K TV. It's 50 inches. That's all I know. I I yeah. just want my TV to work and to look okay. That's it. Yeah, my my TV I think is in the low forty inches. I don't know because I I really didn't care. I was like, that's big enough. It, it was whatever the biggest price size I could get before like it radically jumped up in price for no reason I could figure out. Yeah. So I just right. got whatever that was, and then you know just made sure it was four K. And I will say four K, you know, was quite a quite an improvement because I the TV I had before this claimed it was four K, but now that I have this TV, I can I could see that that was a lie. Or so, you know, or some interesting marketing gimmick, or you know, I had Maury Povich's face just <laughs> coming to my mind. 
um but i mean yeah but ultimately it doesn't it doesn't matter to me as long as i can read the text which is increasingly becoming a problem with every video game which is such a stupid problem for games to have. Like, yeah. Why is that a thing? It has to, it's the same reason I feel like the, the cursor menus are in every RPG now. It must just be like developers make this stuff on PC and don't really realize that a cursor mm-hmm. menu... Their, their face is like six inches yeah. from the... From exactly. You're not going to you're not gonna be able to read this across the room. And then all the playtesters are just playing at TVs right in front of them too. And then you, so right. you also don't realize like, hey, this cursor menu really sucks. Mm-hmm. It was never good. And just because Destiny got away with it doesn't mean the rest of us can. <laughs> uh, I have a Samsung 65 inch 4K. I cannot. Rem- I want to say G6 or something. I can't remember what the model number is. I uh, do not have that prepared, and it would take some serious digging for me to find the the model of this TV. But um, it's funny you mention this, Drew, because my my TV upstairs that used to be my gaming TV that I bought like 15 years ago paid like three grand for it. It's like a 55 inch TV and it's uh, it's now upstairs, but it's starting to do that thing at the very top where like there's a line of pixels. It almost looks like static, but, yeah. but multicolored static. Oh, yeah. That's not moving. So I'm like, man, I think this thing is on its last leg. So I'm kind of in the mindset now that I just need that TV to last me until uh, Black Friday when I can because TVs just seem like so much cheaper now than they were 10 years ago. Like even like 4K ones that like, you can get for under 500 bucks if you're shopping around correctly so Dude, and tvs and tvs um, are also interesting because the secondhand market is useless right. like i feel like nobody like tvs lose their value as soon as they're taken out of the box it's so weird mm-hmm. they're, they're the new cars <laughs> like, you drive them off a lot like, lose... yeah um as far as like if price wasn't a problem honestly i'm, I'm kind of with you guys i i really I, I mean, I would love to have like a theater. Like that's the thing is, I would, I would. It's it's less about the TV itself, but like, you know, the comfortable seating and ease of mm-hmm. access and the lighting in that a way that I would want to, and and uh, that kind of thing interests me more than than the screen itself. I mean, look back in the day when we go to the, pay all this money to go to a theater for a grainy, you know, picture quality, but you know, because it was air conditioned and it was a massive screen and you know had overpriced popcorn. That we could, you know what I mean. That is a, is a thing. So, yeah, I yeah, I, I, I don't never know. understand the need for the TV that's so big it can warm a room. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't but, either. But yeah, I guess I, now I kind of feel hypocritical because I too would want like a giant theater screen for movies and stuff, but I don't want to play video games on something that big. And maybe it's because I need to more, you know, every single second I need to be tracking everything that's happening on every part of the screen that feels tougher to do with a bigger screen for video games. Man, I don't want to just like, you know, turn my head to look at the screen. Yeah. Man. I can't understand what's happening. <laughs> you mean I got to go like this to see the, like, oh, I don't want to do that. Scott is looking at the corners right now. It just feels, oh, it feels tougher to track with how much ammo you have in your gun. You know what? I hate this. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of here. <laughs> no, don't leave me. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I'm sorry for the non-answer, Drew, but like, um, if I had, I say this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna regret saying these words. But if I had the TV I have now, for the next twenty years, I feel like I'd be happy. Yeah. I don't really feel like I need to upgrade unless something goes wrong with it. I just want this thing to last, and, and um, I think the size is perfect for me. Even it's actually probably too big for what I've got, but it's also not warming my basement. That's that's for damn sure. I, <laughs> my basement gets really chilly. Um, I thought, your, so I thought yeah. your basement was perfect. Well, yeah, because you like to sleep in 62 degrees. Yeah, Zach and I are, fr- are freaks. We both like cold. Oh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm li- I mean, you can attest to this, Zach. I'm down there with like two throw blankets. Yeah, you are, yeah. <laughs> you got a hoodie on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, got to have something for the cat to lay on while I'm playing a game. You All know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. They won't just sit on a lap if you got, you know, shorts or jeans on. You got to gotta have a, something, you know, plush. Yeah. Or fleece, you know, for them to for them to land. I like a cat on my lap when I play video games. Okay, don't sue me. All right, last question comes from Twitter. Uh, positivity counts at positivity c o u n one. What's your favorite food? Is it something you or your family makes, or is it a restaurant food? Who would like to go first? Well, I think Scott's. I think this is our first non video game related question. Scott's answer has got to be what Taco Bell, right? No matter which time, oh, no matter which city you're in, you can get Taco Bell. <laughs> Get the best Mexican food in the country, and we're going to go to Taco Bell. 
I mean, hey, if if nobody bought it, it wouldn't be there in California. I'm just saying. Yeah. No, hey, look, I love Taco Bell. You don't have to. You don't have to tell me. I'm gonna have to go with Korean barbecue. Yeah. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> uh, I get it because you had the we had a terrible Korean barbecue experience. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have to make up for that. By the way, you still owe me a steak dinner. I know from uh, Cloud Wearing a Dress. Yeah, which really was worth it for me. You know, <laughs> that was wow. That was over two years ago. We don't see each other very often. I know. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> and when we do, we don't go for steak dinners. Right? So. Yeah. If we if we find time for a steak dinner in L.A. during E3, sure thing. We'll swing we'll swing that out. But all right. Someone tells me that's sure gonna, it'll be a Korean steak we'll, barbecue. We'll have to dinner. bring our laptops to the steakhouse if we're gonna get work done. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, it will be those guys. Yeah. Favorite food. Uh. My my first instinct was to say kimchi, but that's an ingredient, not a food. Uh, but I do love kimchi. Mm-hmm. You put kimchi in anything. I'll, I'll gobble that up. But I think my favorite food might be just mac and cheese. Like not craft, but like, like for, which mac and I guess is, it's like a kind of a bland answer. But like, no matter where, if I'm going to a restaurant for the first time, I want to try their mac and cheese. That's the standard I'm grading this restaurant on. If you can't do oh, mac okay. and cheese right, what are you even doing in business? If you have it, if that's the kind of food you're serving, you know, or I, right. you know, I search, I search out mac and cheese restaurants. You know, where, wherever I'm at or whatever. It's a thing? Oh, yeah, dude. In Chicago, there's a place called the Midnight Mac and Cheesery. It'll change your life. So good. Really? Yeah, but there's, there's a place uh, down by me where you can kind of like, you know, add your own little ingredients and they make a little mac and cheese to order. It's delicious. Yeah, I, I, I just, just, just in Seattle the other weekend, I, I was up there. I had some smoked salmon mac and cheese. That I can't stop thinking. What? Yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. It was great. It had like a had like a lemon zest to it, some dill, some smoked salmon. Oh, magnificent! So I love wow. I love some decadent mac and cheese. I think is my answer. I, when I think mac and cheese, I just think macaroni and cheese and the chicken strips. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I never think of like putting anything else in macaroni and cheese. Just to me, macaroni and cheese is just that. Oh yeah, no, I like I like to get crazy with it, man. Nice. I'll say uh, just to <laughs> just to make Mo angry in our Discord, uh, Chicago style pizza. Uh, that's just the best food on the planet. Why? Uh, why does he see the conversation? Well, he, he, he he was dogging on uh, Chicago style pizza. He says it's not pizza; it's casserole. It's it's yeah. I always say it's lasagna, but yeah. I mean, it's it's delicious. It is delicious. I love it to death. But uh, yeah, I guess yeah. I understand the argument that it's not pizza. I've never had. New York style pizza, love it. I haven't either. Which is just really thin and big pieces. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Is that really yeah, the only the, difference? Yeah, the grease dripping down your arm because you can't eat it yes. fast enough. Oh, yeah, it's good right. stuff. Well, I'm a Never simple, I'm a simple lady, and my favorite food's pizza. So you it's, can't it's go wrong. Go wrong with pizza yeah. because there's so many different options. Yeah, you, know, you have so many different toppings, sauces. Yeah. Now I feel less bad about my mac and cheese answer. Cause that's you how don't I, feel ashamed about that. Because that's how I feel. Same with pizza, right? You get all these toppings. or something. You get some buffalo sauce going on your pizza if you want to. You can get crazy with that stuff. Yeah, you have barbecue mm-hmm. sauce on it. Yeah, That sounds southern to me. Uh, well, you guys are making me feel less guilty about my answer because mine is definitely a comfort food as well. It's just, uh, and speaking of casserole, uh, <laughs> you're going to laugh, but I love tater tot casserole. Wow, okay. It is, it is my comfort food. It is amazing. It's just hamburger. You know, mixed with some corn and cream of mushroom soup. Um, you you, you put some uh, tater tots on the top, some beef roux seasoned salt. <laughs> of course, yeah. I, I'm not joking. I actually do put beef roux seasoned salt think on it. Worked. It just works well. It's the best I seasoning like salt. A, half a pan of that stuff for a meal if I really wanted to. It just never, it's just so delicious. And it's something that I never had until I met, um, until I met my wife. I she actually uh, introduced the recipe to me. I think it's a little adorable. We all answer with like a comfort food. Yeah. You know, yeah. None of us were like. It's actually become the thing that I make for people like when, when they're upset. Like if somebody has a death in the family or somebody's having surgery and or somebody, you know, you know, has something horrible going on in their life and I can't do anything about it except do something to comfort them. Mm-hmm. I make them a tater tot casserole. That's kind of become my thing. Now, has anybody taken and, a bite of your tater tot casserole and be like, you know what? It was worth it. I'm dying to have this. <laughs> They've not said that, no. I'll go to but, keep this uh, in mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you inevitably come to my father's funeral, you know, give me that tater tot oh casserole, casserole be like, it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, if you had to croak for- You're going you're gonna to be expecting a tater tot yeah, casserole yeah. next time. Something. 
I don't know how I'm going to ship one to Portland, but uh, we'll, yeah. Well, well, I assume I assume the funeral wouldn't be in Portland, but uh, yeah. All right. Wait, wait, hold on. Well, I that wanna, was can a... I can I do a can I a little add on to this positive accounts question? Oh here? sure. What's your favorite fast food? Uh, food. I mean, you you already know the answer Bell? to that. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's a great choice. I mean, it just doesn't yeah. get any better than that. I think mine's Although Taco I will Bell. say, I probably I probably spend more money at McDonald's than I do Taco Bell. But that's also because I really like McDonald's breakfast. And what do you What do you get at Taco Bell? What's your go to? Uh, quesadilla. Okay. Uh, it, my standard order is a que- chicken quesadilla with a Baja. Gotta get a Baja Blast. Yeah, yeah Baja Blast Mountain Dew. Um, I always get the taco if I if I'm feeling like spending the extra money. I always get the Doritos yeah. Loco Taco Supreme, um, and then I also would always get an additional. They don't sell them anymore, but they used to call them a Meximelt. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Cause like, With a Pico de Gallo. Yep. Yeah. So they don't make that anymore, so I actually have to special order. I get a cheesy roll-up, and I ask them to add beef, and then they don't even do Pico anymore, but I ask add them to a- add tomatoes and onions, and and that just basically makes like a sort of Meximelt. Yeah. So that whole thing, you know, often costs around $14. <laughs> um, <laughs> Worth but, it. Uh, it is definitely my favorite. I actually... Subscribe to the Taco Bell app. Yeah, yeah. Now. I'm a big, oh, like, I'm a big fan of the Taco Bell. I've been on the Taco Bell app for years. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty handy. Although it's it's it still seems weird to me to like buy something on an app to order ahead of time when they when you they clearly have enough time to make it by the time I drive my car around to the Whopper layer. So like, there's <laughs> you know, not the BK Lounge. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I don't think they start making. I don't, I don't think they start making it until you get there. They must not. Yeah. I, would, I mean, I would kind of hope so. I mean, I, I I always purposely just make sure that I'm, you know, putting in the order like on the way or something. Right. But Melissa, what's your favorite fast food joint? Probably Taco Bell. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to go wrong. <laughs> yeah. What you What do you go? I'm so glad you guys are on my side. Guys. I get so much crap for liking Taco Bell here. Do you guys surround yourself with better people? They give you crap for playing video games. They give you crap for Taco Bell. They just give you yeah. crap for being you. Did you know that Taco Bell was rated Rockford's number one Mexican restaurant one year? <laughs> I'm not making it up. There was a billboard. <laughs> Taco Bell paid for a billboard that said voted Rockford's number one Mexican restaurant. Well, you know what? Of the Mexican food I've had in Rockford, that sounds right. Uh, there's, there's, some, there's a place called uh, Mexico Classico over on Broadway. That's pretty good. Okay. Melissa, do you have a go-to Maybe. Taco Bell order? I kind of sw- switch it up every- I'll I'll order the same thing for like three months and then I'll switch it up. Right okay. now I'm getting like a cheesy bean and rice burrito and then I'll have nachos and cheese on the side. That's a perfect order. Thank that's you. A, that's a great order. I feel I feel okay in my heart now because I don't know why. Well, Taco Bell's the last place you can go to where you can get fed for four bucks. I know, and that's it's not uh, me. That's on the. Uh, I think it's a dollar for that cheesy bean and rice burrito. Yeah, it's a steal. Yeah, not you, Scott. You get twelve dollar Taco Bell, but dude, I, you, I, four. There's no way four dollars would fill me up at Taco Bell because Taco Bell is a thing that, like, I'm ne- I I'm never satisfied until I'm uncomfortable yeah. eating Taco Bell. I like that. Like, like I just I could <laughs> I could eat it all day long. I just never get full. It's, it's, a, it's a problem. Yeah, uh, Taco Bell for me too. I, but, although beef roux, I don't know if that counts. It's kind of a step up. I feel like. But, uh, yeah, and people that don't live in the Rockford area, I've probably heard yeah, us talk about beef roux, but yeah. I don't know about beef roux that much. It's the best, and best food in the Zach, world. Zach, beef roux is stupid expensive, man. Yeah. Like, they've just, like, increased their prices, like... Oh, like... Like, a, like a, it's nuts. Because, I mean, because we knew it was pricey last time I was there around Christmas or whatever. Wait, yeah, I saying? spent $14 for a meal. Like, just, you know, you just, sandwich, you just fries, you that, You just said you do that at Taco Bell, too. No, I know, but that's also, like, a quesadilla, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know, a I know. taco, a Mexamelt. Um, a drink, you know, this is just a sandwich, fries, and a drink it was like fourteen dollars. Yeah, I have I have too much childhood wrapped up in beef roux. It'll always be my my sweet baby. It's really good. <laughs> I love it. My wife actually likes the beef better at Arby's, so she'll make me go to Arby's to get the beef, but then go get the fries at beef roux. <laughs> Zach is look like he's gonna throw up. Oh, that's one of the most horrifying things I've ever heard. I like Arby's. Terrible. They actually make decent euros too. I hope the audience liked my foray into asking you guys about your Taco Bell orders. I was just curious. Yeah, 
Did you tell us your standard? No, he didn't tell us. No, I so I I like to get whatever the novelty box is, you know, because like every uh-huh. month they do a new little novelty item, and the box is always a good deal. It's like seven bucks. You get whatever the the new like right now it's a grilled cheese burrito, and you should get like yeah you know, I think you get a chalupa and a taco as well, you know, and some chips and cheese and a, and a Baja Blast for seven bucks. That's a steal. That's an absolute steal. And it's, That's what I should do. It's a disgusting amount of food. The grilled cheese burrito is great. They give you a separate little tissue to eat it from because it's so greasy. But it Seriously? is good. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, it's greasy. Yeah, they wrap it in this like food wax paper and then they wrap it in the Taco Bell wrapper because you need the extra layer. It's amazing. Ugh. It's wonderful. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, if the box is bad that month or whatever, I just like to get the like the beefy milk burrito. I'll go two of those. Some chips and cheese. And a Baja nice. Blast every time. Taco Bell tastes yeah, I it tastes weird without a Baja Blast. It does. Once in a while I'll do a Pepsi because I swear fountain Pepsi tastes better than bottled Pepsi. Yeah. I don't know why. It tastes lighter. But yeah, there's there's something about the the combination of the Baja Blast with, with the with Taco Bell food that just really works. So well there you go. Positivity count positivity counts. Thank you for your question. Our our one non video game related question for the week. Um, next week, we do not have a topic assigned yet, but there's a possibility, pretty strong possibility, it will be just Zach and I next week. So uh, uh, we'll be thinking of something to discuss. We'll be doing another Sunday recording. And uh, that's going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Zach, before you get out of here, you have any parting words for the listeners or uh, any recommendations? Well, I'm big. I'm a big Lord of the Rings guy. Lord of the Rings is probably my favorite book, uh, which I know is not, it's not a controversial stance uh so i watched rings of power and it it's okay you know it's not it's not the dumpster fire i thought it was gonna be but it also didn't it doesn't light my world on fire it's uh you know i think half the i think over half the characters are just made up so it's really not like i don't you know no i was just you know so i don't really feel like it's a direct adaptation like the movies were this is more like inspired by lord of the rings as it were Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's okay. The editing is really weird. It makes me think, I'm like, is this made for like the TikTok generation? Like stuff just happens so fast. It's not like, hmm. I think it's tough because like we're watching House of the Dragon obviously at the same time or, or, you know, and, and. Which is really getting good by the way. It is. Yeah, no, a big, big fan of that show, which is, you know, as somebody who really did not like Game of Thrones season eight, didn't hate it like the internet seems to, but didn't, didn't like it at all. Uh, it's nice to feel pulled back into that world. But I like the world of Middle Earth a lot more. I just kind of wish the show was matched the quality I expect. Like, I like all the outrageous, like, Keller Brimbor, like all those ridiculous names and stuff. And, uh, but, I, but I wish the show just had the, how was it, the confidence that House of the Dragon does. We're just, like letting moments mm-hmm. breathe and taking your time. You know, like, like Galadriel jumps off this boat, right? And just like swims a thousand miles in like two minutes. It's really weird. <laughs> Like or like, it, it, uh, an example of the pacing is she's like on the snowy mountaintop at the beginning of the show, right? And then her her team is like, "You, we're turning back now," you know, with or without you. And then she looks back at them angrily, and then it just like cuts away. And you're like, "Oh my god, what will her decision be?" And it cuts away to like an elven town, and like she's just there in a dress, like hanging out. And you're like, "Okay, I guess she decided to come back then." Also, you you said you were further north than anybody had ever been. But it seems like it was a pretty casual trip back, though. <laughs> like, it's just really weird, like just jarring stuff like that, to where I feel like a, a more uh, confident show would would know how to tackle that a little bit better. So it's just kind of weird in that way. But yeah, I just yeah. I wish it was better. But it's not. But I'm glad it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Because <laughs> those trailers were yeah, awful. I didn't even bother with the trailer, so yeah, I just have very little interest in Middle Earth. I'm sorry, I know you love it. I just I don't know. Maybe if I had read the books when I was younger, I'd be I'd be more into it, but I never did. Yeah, so. yeah, I read them when I was like nine or so. So yeah, yeah. Alyssa, what about you? I have been massively burned out from live action TV, but I saw this series on Netflix called Nightmare High, and it drew me in because it's a Korean drama, but each episode is around fifteen minutes long, and there's only twelve episodes, so. I'm like, I'll check this out because it sounds interesting. It's about this new teacher that comes in because the other teacher had an accident. And when the new teacher comes in, the students, there's all these students that 
he kind of zones in on. And the students all have something they need or want help with. And he basically, he'll lure them in with a, he helps them, like, one girl get a boyfriend. And one guy be able to beat another guy in a fight. But then to keep on having the boyfriend or be come stronger, they have to sign a contract with blood, which I'm thinking, okay, don't do that. That's stupid. But they do it anyway. And it just shows what happens, the bad things that happen from them signing these contracts. It's not the best TV show ever, but since it's only about 15 minutes an episode, it's really easy to binge and it always ends with a cliffhanger. And every two episodes are devoted just to one student. And when the student's contract runs out, they just disappear and everyone forgets they existed. And I haven't finished the series yet, so I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. But it's really, it's interesting. It's Like I said, it's not the best thing I've ever watched, but it's interesting enough to keep me watching it. It kind of is helping with the TV slump. So if you want something short and you don't mind reading subtitles and it sounds interesting, I'd say check it out. Sounds good. I got a weird recommendation for you guys. I'm going to recommend a cocktail. <laughs> I know this is the first time I've ever done this, but um, when my wife and I were on a cruise, one of the cocktails we had there we really liked that you could buy on the ship for like the crazy stupid amount of money. Uh, we liked it so much I came back and tried to uh, learn how to recreate it. And I recreated it, but um, didn't. I thought it was a little bit too sweet, so I actually kind of made made it my own, added some different stuff. So uh, I think it's called a, I think you'd, you'd call it a martini because I use vodka instead of uh, rum, but it is a lavender uh, a ra- lavender raspberry martini, which I know sounds like sounds really weird, but it is outstanding. It is two parts um, raspberry vodka, one part lavender syrup. I get the Monin syrup that they sell at uh, at uh, you know bars and stuff like that, and then um, about a half a part of lemon juice. Uh, put all that on there. Some sugar on the glass. Mm. Lavender has like become a fantastic flavor. I've even started using it in coffee. No, making making some fancy coffees, you know, with the frother. Sure. Mm. I I I'm really digging the lavender flavor, but uh, yeah, I don't really have a name for it. I don't. I didn't make it. I just kind of it's a derivation of a. They called it a uh, lavender daiquiri on the cruise that we had because I think they used rum, but I thought the rum made it a little bit too sweet. So, yeah. You want to try a new uh, little beverage? It's pretty good. I had about three of them last night, and uh, had had a pretty good night last yeah. night. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Zach and Alyssa, thank you so much for being here. As always, it is a pleasure to get down and talk to you guys for a couple hours about games. I want to remind everybody that The Gaming Outsider is produced by Nate Lucas. All the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemage and Metroid Metal. His website is stemagemusic.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Zach Parkerson and Alyssa White, and we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember... There's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you.